December the 29th, uh, 2006. And uh, we're here at the home of Robert Bob Stewart, as I know him, <laughs> to uh, do an oral military history interview. And uh, this interview is sponsored by the uh, Lowell Area Historical Museum. Now, I uh, also we've asked uh, Marie, his wife, to uh, uh, be in the uh, uh, interview here with us because she played a really important part in, in Bob's life. <laughs> For how many years, Marie? 58? What were you about? 58. 58 years. 19, yeah, 1948 you were married, yeah, so it's 58 years. September the 1st of 48. How about that? And uh, this uh, museum, you worked a lot of things, done a lot of things in Lowell, and know a lot of people in Lowell, so you've got a lot of things that you can remember and think about. Anytime you think about something, Marie, you just chime right in, okay? Oh, so, yes. now, this interview uh, will be put into the archives of uh, the uh, Lowell Area Historical Museum. And uh, a copy of it will be available uh, for the... Um, library. We have a rental library, or not really rental, but it's the one that you can come in and take a tape out. We oh, make really? an extra tape, oh. and then you can put that in, that anybody can come and take that tape out, oh, take yeah. it home, and, and research it. Now, Good. it's uh, uh, very uh, important, uh, that research library is very important because of the, a lot of the kids in school, they're studying history. They have to hear about these events that happened in our community. Yeah, true. And when it comes from you folks directly, it means a lot more than it does to read it in a book. When somebody has been there yeah. and telling it, then it really takes life. And so we feel this is really important for people that are doing research and kids that are doing papers and trying to study history, uh, especially with Bob, with your European history. And all of the area of the United States, which we'll show here, where you traveled from the time you went into the service yeah. until you uh, come home, mm -hmm. you traveled a lot of miles. Oh, you did a lot. You better believe it. And uh, that's kind of neat to see that well, you had that times, opportunity. Three times to West Coast. Yeah. The original start when we went from Cape, uh, Fort Custer to 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 Beale. Yeah. And then back for furlough. Mm-hmm. And then back again. In St. Louis, yeah. And then we went to, to, to Fort we Lewis. Went to Fort Lewis. Yeah. We went, that's where we left from Fort Lewis to go overseas. Mm -hmm. was, so uh, now um, uh, these, um, this uh, tape will also, one other thing, this tape where eventually, it isn't all happening on all of them yet because the government's kind of slow, but eventually when they get their act all together, uh, a copy of this tape will go into the archives of um, the uh, Library of Congress at Washington, D.C. They're developing a big uh, library of, uh, of uh, veteran stories. Oh, yeah. So this will become a part of that also. <laughs> so you'll go down in history, Bob. Let's see that. <laughs> and Marie. <laughs> and Marie telling about our community here, which is the important part for your, the thing that we're, we'll be talking about. Now, my name is actually Ivan Blau, and I'll be having uh, this just regular conversation with you like we're already doing, and uh, with you and uh, Anne-Marie. And uh, Nick Mao is my grandson, and Nick is going to be doing the operating camera today. And uh, from time to time, he'll uh, add it, he'll chime in. He'll have to think of some questions or something, he'll chime in. Whatever. Because he has been to a lot of the places where you were. Oh, really? And uh, he studied about them in history Good. and teaches kids about them in history and about the wars yeah. and all the different things. So, to get this thing underway and get started at it here, uh, Bob, uh, I'd like you to tell me a little bit about your ancestors. Now, I know you don't know a lot about your grandpa and grandma uh, on your father's side and much about your grandpa and grandma on your mother's side, but tell me what you can of names or or their origins or their uh, what well, what. Their, uh, um, nationality they well, were you know, kind of thing. really mm -hmm. you you hit it right <laughs> I don't know a great deal uh, my grandpa 
I, as a matter of fact, I don't even know what he done as a, as a living because he was fairly elderly when I was when I was born. Yeah. He didn't. He passed away in 1945, I think. Uh-huh. And uh, and like I told you, his brother they lived in that they lived over to uh, south of here. I never could remember exactly the name of the town, but they had a nice farm over there, and they had their pet dogs and their made their hard cider and. Uh, had a, they had a big time. <laughs> had a big old Buick car they drove. Oh yeah. The uh, but it's the history of what what they done work wise. My uncle uh, Bill, like I told you, he was a developer of a lot of areas of East Grand Rapids. Now when I say it just I can't tell you, I can't remember the name of where the what where it was, but it was just developing. Mm-hmm. Uh, houses, most houses. Of them. Oh yeah, mainly, mainly <coughs> yeah. Uh, homes and so mm-hmm. forth. Yeah. You told me a story about trying to find the place over there one time or something where they lived. And oh, the yeah, the farm. Yeah. And I couldn't to this day. Yeah. I, I wish, gosh, I wish I could remember mm-hmm. where it was because it was a nice big old farm. Mm-hmm. And Uncle Bill owned that. And, and that was your Uncle Bill. Yeah. Uh, well, it was. Yeah, he. We always called him Uncle Bill. Oh. Okay. He was my, my uh, grandfather's brother. They were a pair of elderly men, you know. And your your grandfather's first name was what? My grandfather's name was was George. George. Okay. Yeah, George. Right. All right. George. George and then did you? On your, that him. was on your mother's side of the yeah, family. Yeah. Yeah. My and dad's side. You don't know anything about them. One at all. thing. No, okay. No, well, that's no. good enough. Now tell me a little bit about your your father, his name, and Arthur F. Stewart. Uh huh. He was a he was a, uh, a carpenter of, okay. back in the, in the, when there was good times mm-hmm. till the depression hit. Mm-hmm. And the depression hit that took care of things. They they lost everything they had. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people did, didn't they? They sure did, I'll tell you. Yeah. They lived on Carlton Avenue in Grand Rapids okay. when they moved out here. And he had married who he had married uh, what was her name? Your mother? Oh, I'm just trying to think. Well, it was Cora Rich. Cora Rich. Cora Rich, okay. yeah. And, uh, and she had one they had she had a sister, mm-hmm. Susie. All right. And she lived in Detroit. And her name was Green. Okay. My uncle uncle my uncle uh, Lou worked in uh, some type of a uh, woodworking plant and I don't ever really know what it was because mm-hmm. we lived in Detroit. We'd go and see him once a year and then come here. That was about it. We'd, my dad would take me to a ball game. That was a big thrill in those days. Oh yeah. Where would you go to a ball game? Tiger Stadium. Tiger Stadium. Oh yeah. Yeah, right. we'd take a streetcar, go out to the corner. Now let's, uh, that was, now just find out when were you born then, Bob? When was I born? Yeah. I was born June the 18th, 1924. And uh, at home or in the hospital? I was born in Blodgett Hospital. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And that's when you lived in, uh, in on Carlton Street yeah, in Grand Rapids. Yeah, Athens. yeah. Okay. Well, we were, I think I was six months old when they moved out, out here, I believe. Right here? Yeah. At 722 North Washington? Yeah. George Parker. That was the real yeah. George Parker. They lived next and they lived right up there. About across, if I remember right, about where Brunson's house is. Mm-hmm. Who lives at Brunson's house? My, his his dad. Yeah. Okay. And my dad and mother, That's Tony, a, Mike, and Tony. They were in Brunson's house. Yeah, now. Okay. Yeah. It was Lippert's for a while, and then yeah, they right. what? And then yeah. Roger Brown had it, yeah. and now uh, yeah. now Mike and Tony have it. That's for a, that's like a eleven years. Mike and Tony were looking the other day. They lived there longer than any of the others. <laughs> Have they been there 11 years yeah, already? Yes, that's an yeah. Boy, I could remember yeah. when they first bought it. You know. yeah. Now, um, okay, so you came here when you were six months old. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And um, uh, you've lived here ever all, all, ever since, never lived moved here. away. No, the only place I moved away was in the service and yeah. back home, and I've never... Never away. No. Okay. You went, so you went to school here in Ohio. Yeah. Know, what school did you go to, Bob? Well, we went to the, we started a school, I think. I, I can't remember where we went to kindergarten, but Dora Banks, who later married Gordon Johnson, 
right? Was my kindergarten teacher, but we were the first few grades that we went to was at the East Eastward School, which is now the what is that a roller rink or bowling alley mm -hmm. or whatever? Yes, right that was a school uh -huh. right yeah. here on Main Street. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, that's where we and uh, then now uh, Miss Krieger was one of my teachers. Huh? And I can't remember, there was another one, remember the street is named after, when we go to, we used to go to Sue's in Rockford, we drove by that street, that was named after the family, I can't remember. Tiffany? Tiffany. Nellie Tiffany. Nellie Tiffany, Tiffany was, she was another one, yeah. Another one of your teachers yep. at the West yep. School. I got two of them that I can remember. That was the first, first when you were younger in Britain. One to four, or something like that. First to fourth grade, something yeah, like that. You yeah, probably up yeah. to ten years old. I I would guess probably it was third, fourth grade. Uh -huh. I, I, I now, did you go there then till your eighth grade before? Oh, you, oh no. We no? Were, we then were, you went where? We went to the old high school. To the high school. And yeah. Okay. I mean, I could remember that. Uh, I don't remember a fifth grade teacher, but a sixth grade teacher was Anna Reynolds. And. Anna Reynolds. Anna Reynolds. Okay. Yeah. I think she was there yet when I was. Uh, oh, she probably teaching. was, because she was there for years. And didn't Great you tell lady. me that in your eighth grade uh, that uh, Bernice? Uh, oh yeah, Bernice Smith. Smith. Yeah. Now she taught English when I started high school oh, in 1945. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. She, ninth oh, grade yeah, English. Oh, she was there. Long. Oh, she was there for years. Nice, nice lady. And you knew them. Uh, they just lived up, up down the road here. Yeah, they lived down the road about two blocks. They lived mm -hmm. in the corner of, uh, oh, what is it? Amy lives in Ruby's house. It's a street yeah. 14. 15? I don't know. Well, I'm just trying to think what. There's it's Avery Street, and there's High yep. in there, so I can't really. Yeah, yeah I, I it's should on King know. Street. It's on King Street. King Street, yep. yep. And it's corner. right in the middle of the block there. Between uh, Monroe and uh, and uh, Lafayette. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, um, he, she, her husband was a teacher too, wasn't he? Oh, the Bill was, a, was the egg teacher. Okay. Yeah. Before John Pinex came oh, after him. Oh, okay. Bill was just he was Bill was there for a long time. Yeah. And then Mr. Rapies after that, and then yeah. I, I had, and then that became uh, Mr. Hagen. Was the last day teacher. Yeah. Was my yeah. teacher. Now, tell me. Uh, I thought you you told me a little story about you going over there to uh, see uh, uh, Bill and and Bernice occasionally. You drop in. Oh well, I was reading meters. <laughs> yeah, reading meters. I come yeah, usually, okay. usually got there in the usually in the morning. Uh -huh. It just had to be the way the route was laid out. That I get there, you know. Uh -huh. And the first thing Bill would say was, "Just said, don't you want a beer?" <laughs> at seven thirty eight o'clock in the morning, all Bernice would go just in the tirade. Oh, well, he was deathly against it anyway, and that was perfectly all right. But you didn't do that when you're working for sure. And he'd do it just to get her gold, and he did. Yeah, nice okay. people. Well, so you were right. actually when you were going to school, you were doing uh, a little part time work, weren't you? I did in the twelfth grade. Yeah, I worked because I started working at the Light and Power, and and uh, night nights maybe one or two nights a week, as I remember, and uh, maybe Saturdays because they worked nine hour days. We worked, yeah. and uh, so I, that why I would have started that in nineteen. When did I graduate? Forty three. About forty three. Forty three. Hmm? I would I would have started about forty two. Parts of part time field. Mm -hmm. yeah. what, what did you do? Office work? And well, we just we fill the fill the bulb racks up if they have because at that time they sold they sold light bulbs and small appliances and things of that order. I see. And they don't do anymore. Yeah. No, gosh, mm -hmm. no, they haven't done that in years, years. Mm -hmm. But it was uh, Lowell Light Power. That was pretty neat to have that come to Lowell and have oh, our own yeah. municipal oh, light and power plant. Yeah. That was a neat thing. That was so uh, you graduated then from high school in about uh, 1943. 43, yeah. Now, um, uh, the war was going on pretty good. The Japanese had, and the Germans oh, yeah. were going the heck over in we Europe, were, and the Japanese had attacked Pearl Harbor in 41. Yeah, we and, went, we went, 
let's say I graduated, whatever, probably a weekend, I don't remember mm -hmm. exactly. But the next week we went to Detroit for an exam and we were off. Right from there, huh? Oh, well, or well, you come no, back we here. came back here, but then mm -hmm. Ed Keel, who did I tell you? Boot Rod Bush, yeah. myself, yeah. and Stub Potter. Four of you. Yeah. Huh? And the only uh, one left. Yeah, exactly. That's right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And anyway, you uh, you passed your exam, all right. Oh, you yeah. Got back here to. Yeah. And what what did what did you think about that having to go into service at that time? What were you, well, what were your thoughts about? I wasn't that? really that thrilled. You wasn't no. You know, a young person, a kid. I'd been here with my parents. Yeah. So that's as far as I'd been away. Grand Rapids, probably. Here <laughs> yes, that's right. Yeah. In my lifetime. Right. But uh, you know, so what it was, was quite an experience to, for a young person. And, you know. then, and you were only 18, I, you were just about ready to be 19. Yeah, right? I, yeah. I was just and you said you were born on June I'm 18th. Born June 18th. And, and you graduated in uh, the first part of June, first yeah. week of June. So right. you was almost in the Army before you were 19. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I was, uh, there was only one kid younger than me. In our outfit in the service, and his name was, I can't think of Richard Niemeyer, and he was from uh, down south, either Battle Creek or, or St. Joe or Ballard in that area. Nice young guy, good athlete. But uh, other than that, they're all older. There were a lot of them. You know, they were, like I told you before, they were mechanics, mm -hmm. welders. Mainly, that's that was. Yeah. No, you and you most all stayed together. Now, when you came back here after you had your exam uh, down there in Detroit, um, did they furnish uh, transportation for you to go to for the Fort Custer? Is that where you had to go? Yeah, we had to go to Fort Custer. Ed Keel, his wife Adelaide, she was going to drive us down there. I see. No, wait a minute. No, no, no. They were, were there was supposed to be a bus here okay. to pick us up. Uh -huh. At the corner where G's Hardware is now. And that was going to be Hoop Robbish, Sub Potter, Ed Keel, and me. Uh -huh. But we, we stood there waiting. My dad took me down there. And we stood there waiting for a while. And nobody showed up. Well, I don't remember all the arrangements, how they how it come to be. But anyway, Adelaide drove us to Fort Custer. And I don't remember any more than the fact that we ended up in Fort Custer. Adeline took you down there. Yeah, <laughs> Citizen took down you. There. <laughs> Otherwise, you'd have been AOL before we, you got sworn in. Yeah, we'd have had the break before we ever got the, <laughs> the ball rolling. Now, an interesting thing is that a lot of people don't know, and when as soon as someone went into the service, now the lady and the the mother or someone in the family got one of those uh, flags there, and they uh, uh, hung it in the uh, in the window. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, like we got right hanging, that, that's yours, I found in your yeah, archives right. here. It's your mom probably had hanging in the window here oh, while yeah. you were gone to let people know, hey, yeah. I got a son in the service. And it was a proud symbol at that time. That's that, right. That, you know, you hey, bet. one of my sons, that was a patriotic yeah. thing. You and uh, the star in the middle of it is gold, or is, uh, is blue. And if yeah. you saw a gold star, that meant that the, the person had been killed in the service. And uh, so when you went by and you saw a gold star in the window, you had a sense of uh, feeling pretty sad. Anyway, yeah. so that's what the flag is all about. People don't do that anymore. And no. uh, it's, no. I just think it's kind of nice that you had yours that we could bring that out here. All right, you are at how, you were in, um, in um, um, oh, uh, Fort Custer for just a few days. Oh, yeah. I don't and, think uh, we were there even, probably not a week. Either. Not even a week. I don't no. think so, no. And then we went to, uh, to Camp Beale, I, and I don't, there was not, there was, uh, I was the only one of our group, of course, to go to, go to Camp Beale. Oh, yeah. Was, uh, now, Camp Beale is, we'll look at the map here just a minute. We got a map laying right out here. Marie, you want to hold that other corner of that map up just a little bit like that? Bob, you're going to look at it upside down, but here you were in Fort Custer. Yeah. And you, you know, there's this little kid that ain't never been 
away from home much right. further than Grand Rapids That's here. That's about right. And all of a sudden, you've got to go from Fort Custer all the way out across here to California. Yeah. Way over here, up here yeah, by, uh, right near, uh, uh, where did we well, say it was? The, uh, it was the capital of what it say. Yeah. It's Sacramento. 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 Yeah, Lincoln, Cap right? Yeah. Connect. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Camp Beals right near Sacramento here. Yeah. That's a long ways from home. You went yeah. through <laughs> quite a few you states. Yes, you very believe a long walk. Did you go by train? Yeah. Went by train? Yeah. Yeah, we went by train. And, and uh, I don't remember, if, and it was, a, as, I, as I recall, I think there was you know, a group, but I don't remember if there was a dozen or a load. I don't, I don't remember it anymore. Years. Well, you were you were there in uh, Camp Beal, and uh, in fact, uh, there's a there's a United States Army yeah, in Camp, Camp Beal, California. California. You see that over there? That's the home of the 13th Armored Division. Okay, and that is this this is uh, is a group a picture, right? Yeah, that was a group picture. I think we took just before we came home, I think. Okay. I think I think that was taken yeah. in in. Uh, and Marie, you told me that um, that he was right here. Yeah, he was. This guy right here. Yeah. Okay. And the dark one is kind of ducking. Yeah, ducking right a little bit right there. All right. Well, try to get out of it. <laughs> <laughs> and that was a. Now this was a was a. Uh, uh, you were doing your your basic training out there in oh, uh, when you went to Camp B, yeah. over, weren't you? Oh, we're good. And uh, they are they. Um, I believe uh, gave you uh, a uh, manual, right? A manual, kind of the Ordnance Soldier's Guide. Oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Okay. Wow, well, this stuff, Ordnance. Yeah. I, I, I haven't even seen for quite a while. Huh? For a long time. That's yes, right. Sir. You better believe it. So Just now the you, basics. Know, you had a good idea what you were going to be doing. Yeah, a you little bit anyway, it. didn't you? You better believe it. Of course, I they didn't. I didn't get into the the rigor deal, the the the, uh, the, uh, the truck I did the deal with the record until boy, I did the service quite a while. I didn't matter of fact, I didn't get into that until I was in, in Europe. Okay. Yeah. Hmm? But then uh, after you were there in uh, in. Uh, uh, in here in the uh, 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 deal here, yeah. All you do there is is just sure uh, just drill. Uh -huh. You know, I you get up in the morning, you eat your breakfast, you do calisthenics, you go back and or you you get up, go do calisthenics, go back in, eat your breakfast, then you went to the at that time, it was daylight, I'd go out about 6 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And uh, we used to march miles a day. Mm. Boy, in condition. Short order drill. I mean, you march. Oh, boy. Of course, you were in pretty good condition at that time. Oh, right? yeah. yeah. I could, out of school. And stuff. I was in pretty good shape. Anyway, yeah. from there, then, they shipped you up here to... Uh, to Fort Lewis. Fort Lewis. Yeah. Right up here on the bay in Washington. Here, uh, not too far from uh, Seattle. Yeah, it was, it was right right here. beautiful cave. You know, was it? Tell yeah. me a little about it. Oh, it's a beautiful. It took me to like a city. It's they like had gas city. stations, stores, yeah. some, not a lot. Yeah. But, but it was, you know, it was developed. Curbs, gutters, sidewalk, and a lot of the areas. Mm -hmm. the, my dad had worked up there. Your uh, dad did? Yeah, yeah, during the first war. Now he, he told me Isn't what that I, interesting? That when, you went to, was in the yeah. same? When I got home, he said, well, you know, he said, I was there and working there. Uh -huh. When they were building Fort Lewis. Oh, okay. I assumed it, because it would have to be. Okay, that was the First know. World War. Yeah. Okay. Because, uh, and it probably was. That's what right. a coincidence, you know. But it was a beautiful camp. I'd get up in the morning, look up, and I'd see Mount Rainier out of my window. Is that yeah. right? Every morning, look up there at Mount Rainier. Beautiful area. Okay, now you were, okay, that was, uh, 
in Fort Lewis, yeah. and you were there uh, from January 13, 44, to March the 7th, 44, about three months. About three, yeah. It you went, went pretty long. long. Then, Martin, you got you got a a, um, a a furlough then. To we, come home? Uh, see, I came. Yeah, I believe it was from there that I came home on furlough, and then I went back to Fort Lewis, and I wasn't there very long, and we shipped out for uh, the East Coast to the Wood Cross. Okay, so you went, actually, you was up here in St. Louis, they shipped you by troop train, Oh yeah. uh, all the way home for furlough. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, I don't. Or you got it, or you got just a train. Yeah, so you I got don't your remember. Own way for yeah, I, about, I for think... about a week, huh? Yeah. And then you came all the way back here again to uh, to uh, uh, Fort uh, Lewis Fort again. Fort Lewis again, yeah. yeah. All right. And uh, then after uh, after you were here at Fort Lewis for a little bit, uh, the Japanese were going over here pretty good, yeah. Oh, yeah, uh, really yeah. going, uh, you'd think that they'd want you to stay here, but uh, uh, but they didn't, they didn't need uh, you over here anymore. Years, I guess, so. So it must be that they felt that the, the forces were having the Japanese kind of under control here, and the coast here was not uh, as much in debt jeopardy, so they decided they need you over in Europe, yeah. right? Well, yeah, that, that type of an outfit, you see. Or just so we auto maintenance that they there was a lot of them over there. They were different grades of that too. They was light maintenance outfits. Okay. They didn't do anything like that we done we had a motorcycle mechanic, uh, Jeeps, three quarter tons, semis, and then the big trucks. Mm -hmm. we pulled, no, we, there's nothing in tanks. We pulled, like well we pulled tanks. Pulled tanks, but you, you didn't get tanks. A lot of times they'd get knocked out the road and we'd have to go move them out or pick them up and pull them off the side or whatever. That kind of stuff. So they, anyway, they said needed you for that. So they sent you all the way back here by troop train now, is that it? Oh yeah, uh, we went to troop train too. That, all the way across the United States again. Oh yeah, back. After your day. furlough. Way up here to Massachusetts. Yeah. Boston, Massachusetts. Was it Boston? By there, Boston, Boston Harbor. Uh, and uh, here at uh, Boston Harbor, that was... Uh, on March the 21st, so okay. March the 24th, and uh, they had a ship waiting for you there. Yeah. I believe the name of it was what? Do you remember? I do not remember. Well, I mean, your notes here that you wrote home, I got this nice little cheat sheet here. Nick, I want you to see, I marked this one okay. all up because it's a copy, but <laughs> when he was in the service, turn near to the end of his service time, he listed all the places he'd been and it says at the bottom of his little letter that he sent home here this is the list of the places we have been since i left uh, the united states it is not complete but it is as near as i can come to it at the present just put it away and when i get home uh with uh you i'll tell you about them because there is a story about each uh, place and i know you will be interested to hear them. So, so now we're hearing the stories. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, so you got on this boat, and it says right here that it was a USS Santa Rosa. That ring it about was an English. Young? English boat, huh? it, We call it the English slop ship. Oh, how come? Oh, yeah, so it, was, it was just a pit. It was. They had tables. I was in, I was in my better I bunk uh, for 14 days I never got out I was just so sick I just oh he would all the time sick oh it was the largest one of the they told us later one of the largest convoys that went across the Atlantic it was ours we oh. had a, a lot of troop ships and they had a lot of equipment ships with, with, with oil tankers a lot of it was with, with uh, fuel now, this was but, in March '44, well, March was, to April. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, they were getting ready for the uh, for the big big, big invasion. Yeah, they were getting ready huh? for the invasion. You bet. Anyway, after your 14 days of misery, oh boy, I'll tell you, you, you would talk about the food you got. And on the that food, ship. well, I, I I couldn't eat it. What they had was long tables. 
Yeah. And they had one one by four around the edge of the wooden flat. And <laughs> guys were in there puking and eating. Oh, God. Oh, God. It was a, well, it's just a mess, I'll say. That must and when be. When we come home, yeah. we come home <laughs> on a, a uh, what was it, Liberty ship. Oh, yeah. It. That was a little different. Stainless steel. <laughs> Beautiful. Everything. <laughs> what, just, a, what a oh, difference, huh? Oh, yeah. Just everything. John Massif was a good friend of mine, and he was, mm. he later years worked with McDonald and the General Motors in Grand Rapids. He used to come all down then. Great guy. He uh, he said, you know, he said, we're going to take you out for a little walk. And they took me right to the, what do they call it, the fan tail, right at the tail end of that ship. And I, oh, I could have killed him. Oh. But as it was, I was all right. Oh. The ship was, the, the water was... And and there was no, you know, this puking and oh god, it's hard to believe, really. That's the way it was. I mean, yeah. Hey, people couldn't they, they couldn't take it. And it was a, it was two rough. weeks. That was, it was uh, rough, rough going too. The, the the boat was just a tossing and a pitching. And then you got uh, got to uh, uh, Evans Mouth. A V E N M O U T H, Avonmouth, England, is oh, where it okay. said you stopped there, but you just stopped there for part of the day. Oh. It says you just packed or something. That could be. And then you ended up in Portsmouth, England. Now, I've got a map here that shows a little bit better where you went. We came all the way from New York, Boston, New York, there, all the way across the Atlantic. And here's England. And yeah, right there is Portsmouth, right there, yeah. Yeah, right there. Yeah. So um, that's where, in this area here, you're going to be staying here for a little while, waiting to uh, to cross the, yeah, uh, we, we the were English in, Channel. We were in Tidsworth, mm -hmm. and that wouldn't be on that little map there, I think, because I had, but finally found it in a big map of England one time. Oh, yeah. uh, Tidsworth, England is what it was. It was just a, on a side hill. We slept in pup tents, so and that's where I got pneumonia. Oh. And, and just before D Day, and I was in the hospital, but they they got but they cleaned the hospitals out. Anybody that wasn't critically ill, oh. you went out because they, you know, about a week later it was D Day. Yeah, now that was uh, that was uh, the 14th of April, 44. Yeah. To July the 24th, you were there. So D Day was on June the 6th, right yeah. in, in the middle of there. Yeah. So you were. You were in there uh, in England on D-Day, yeah. and did you uh, see any evidence of uh, of uh, the invasion from there? Oh yeah, see we were we had to go a little ways from our shop right there. I can't remember anymore, but I know we had quite a nice shops, a lot of black top around them, and they were they were neat, clean shop. And we went out, we we heard, and all the planes that went over were all fire planes. And they were all had a big wide white circle around. Oh, big white, and that was the identification that they were American. Now, where well, there was what P uh, P forty seven. P forty seven. They went over by us. That's what you see a lot of them. Huh? Oh yeah, boy, I guess. They tell me that there were more casualties in the air force than there were on the ground. That's a statistic that I heard the other day. Oh, really? And uh, there was I a lot of them, I'll tell you. I can't believe that, but on oh, the other I, hand, it's hard but, to believe. That's right. But uh, but we seen one. This was long. I can't remember where we were. What part of the deal? There was three hundred. Uh, oh, what do I want to say? B twenty fours, maybe yeah. bombers. Well, yeah, but it was a. Oh shoot! What was there? So many of them. They were delivered. They was uh, picked that off, but you can't remember. Anyway, the three hundred of them went over, and one hundred and twenty-five of them come back. Yeah. Yeah. They lost half, half, half of them. Yeah. yeah. Half of them. See. Yeah. And they they was carrying like uh, twelve, twelve. Uh, oh yeah, they uh, had you know they had you know, 10, twelve, 12 in guys, the crew, yeah. three, four gunners, mm -hmm. uh, and the, and the pilot, the co-pilot, the radio man. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. it should be ten, twelve guys on yeah. the plane. Navigator and oh yeah. Well, you know what? In uh, here uh, between April twenty fourth and the D Day is going on over there on June the sixth, 
You've been in the service less than one year. Yeah. Less than one year, and because uh, you aren't you aren't 20 years old yet. No. You won't be until 11th of June. 18th. 18th of June. Yeah. 18th of June. Yeah. 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 And uh, yeah. now you didn't know Marie yet, then, did you? Really, very well. Uh, 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 even uh, love her. Well, well, the only ones that I got off drive by it was Irma and Ruby. Okay. So yeah. we're pretty soon here. Uh, I know that uh, when you get you get home, it ain't too long until Marie gets into the act here. So <laughs> if you lit her up on the corner, <laughs> did you know he was in the service, Marie? I didn't know he, anything didn't even, about him. You didn't even thinking about him and, at that time. I right? mean, his mother and dad came in to start to get this life and just said that he had a son, but yeah, I didn't know him. Oh yeah, not until he got home. All right. Well, I was trying to get to the juicy part of this romance here, you see, and I thought maybe I started down the letters that come back and no, forth. No, no, uh -uh. no, didn't, didn't, didn't no, no. start there, okay. Anyway, uh, you, uh, for a couple of days there after you were in Tidsworth, uh, did you get to talk to any of the English people? Much of any? Did you get to go? Not a great deal. I, 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 I can't remember. I, I don't think we didn't know. No. We didn't spend much time. In uh, getting, they just we just were not allowed to. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Didn't find any animosity from the English. No, uh, no. Too much, huh? Okay. Not, not a great deal. They had a lot of. I remember, as we were in uh, in Tidsworth, there was a lot of what they called haystack annies. Haystack annies. What was that? You can about imagine. Oh, okay. Yeah. I have to have a picture drawn for me here, don't I? <laughs> that was a riot. Haystack Eddie. Yeah. Marie's yeah, shaking had, her head over here. <laughs> we had a big, uh, the, we, uh, there was a large encampment, well, it was a, like a prison that they had built uh, for, of Italians that they captured. Oh, yeah. And they had uh, they had a just barbed wire. We know what they were trying to get out. They want to go anywhere. Uh -huh. I don't, we went by it. I can't think where if we go into our shops or what. Or I can't remember what town it was. But there was a lot of them dressed them all in blue, but the color of your pants. Oh. Like overall, mm -hmm. overall color. Uh -huh. Yeah. All right, you, uh, so Tidsmouth, England was kind of rainy and dreary, and you were sick with the pneumonia. Oh, yeah. Pretty it soon was, got it better. It was just a small little burg, as I recall. But, uh, the Bay Woodyard, right, after we got home, we were talking about it one day, and he said, well, I was just about 15 miles from there. Oh. And he was in the engineers. I see. Engineers. Yeah. Then they say that they, uh, that uh, by your, your um, notes here, that you wrote home, you said you went to Weymouth, England, and you was over there for just two days. That was probably just a staging place, because then you were went to Portland, England. Oh yeah. And the Portland is right close by where we were there. Portland, England is. Um, Port here's Portsmouth right here. Yeah. And Portland, England is right about oh, there too. Okay. And uh, that's right on the English Channel, right across from uh, from Normandy here. Yeah. Uh, Norman. Uh, the Normandy invasion, where it was. I don't remember exactly. France. Where, this is what France. How yeah. we were near when we went in because we just well, it was just a sandy, just a, as I recall, just a sandy beach, like going to Grand Haven. Yeah. Actually, yeah, quite well, similar to that. Well, uh, tell me a little. Here's um, it says that uh, in Portland you uh, you uh, boarded uh, an LST boat. Yeah. Put you on. Now, that's where he fell asleep. You fell asleep. Yeah. Tell me about that crossing. I can't remember the. <laughs> who, I can't remember who was with me. Huh. One of my riggers or what? 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 The other guys, and and we just sat down and we were just we must have just dozed off because <laughs> it took a while to get across. The water was wasn't rough. You know, the sea wasn't rough. It wasn't that? Just huh? a channel, no. And next thing we knew, we the first, first sergeant come on. I don't know what the hell he was doing running around, but he, he was, maybe he was looking for strangers like us, but he thought it. And he went and said, what the hell are you doing down there? I said, well, we're sleeping. And he said, well, you're pretty good going. I can bring it. He was laughing. He said, well, I laughed. He said, it wasn't very funny. Said, because they, 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 they were, our motorized stuff was all gone.
saw they were up in the up in the town. Now, let me get this straight. Here's this LST going across yeah. the English Channel. Yeah. You two jokers are sleeping yeah. with all the rest of the of the crew and, and all the rest of and, those guys. And they got uh, up. As many as could get on that boat. Yep. And they run this thing up onto the beach. Yeah. They drop the front end down, uh, right? On yeah. LST, and yeah. then everybody piles off. Everybody it. takes off. And you two guys are We're sleeping. We're sound asleep. <laughs> I can I I I I can just remember a little very faintly, but I know that's what happened. We <laughs> fell sound asleep. Well, how did you catch up with the rest of them? Oh, wasn't that far up there, really? Oh, well, you could feel. When we got going, we I can I, I don't remember how we got there, but you caught up with them. We anyway. caught up. All right. <laughs> Now, apparently about that time you were in the ordnance crew and you uh, uh, were, we were assigned to a truck, right? Or were in there no, somewhere? No, at that somewhere? time, what was it? I worked in the shop. In the shops, then, okay. Yeah, just doing a little of everything. Because uh -huh. I was no mechanic, that's for certain. Okay. And I didn't know too much about it. I think I worked at the battery department for a while. Oh, okay. Of all things. Uh -huh. But I don't know, I got to... I, I, I kind of bite up with this guy, I can't think, he was the second freight maker. Oh. And he was a good guy, and he would, could do anything, and he could do it better than most all the rest of them. Oh. But he had a little problem with the old... Oh, uh, wow, again, huh? Well, yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> but he, uh, he didn't get demoted too much. I mean, I, he, he learned me how to drive. So then, then you got a truck then? Yeah, then I got my own rig. Uh, you got your own so truck. You is, that a, is that a, we got a picture down here of you buy a, a truck. In fact, I'm just going to hold it up a little, Nick, and uh, so Bob can see it too. This, oh, this truck a, right here. Yeah. All that's right. A ten, that's a 10 ton. 10 ton truck. Uh, so they, they pull. They and you're sitting there with, was this one of your buddies Yeah, here? let me see. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, his name was Alexander. He was one of the other drivers. Nice, drunk, nice guy. Uh -huh. Nice guy. Okay. You bet. So maybe you can zoom he in. Matter of fact, he came to see me here. Did he? Yeah, he came to visit after the world, after we were home. Can you see? I so it looks like some printing on the that truck, that one on the other side over here. This one right up here. Mm -hmm. You read that? It looks like from here it says Sergeant. Stewart, you had your name right on your oh, truck. Yeah, you had to have your name on your truck. No, did you? Nobody else drove your truck then. No, no. Nobody no. else drove. Mm -hmm. No, they were loaded through. Got all our gear on there. Okay. All right. So. All we, we had we had a Thompson submachine gun in our sidearms. That's all we had when we'd go out at night. I see. That's what we were allowed to carry. You go out to pick up a. Yeah, if we had to go out and pick up something blocking the road, or, you know, a lot of times they'd blow a tank up or something, or they'd shove the road full of them. Oh. They had a long time. Right after, wasn't too long after the war started, or that we were over there, that they, I'm just trying to think, I kind of forgot about this. We got into the, the shop guys, did the welders mainly. They, had, they were making cutters. They grew a lot of hedge grow, what they call hedge grows over there. Uh huh. Along the road. For fences. Yeah. And I mean, they was it been there for years. Yeah. Not just for the war, but just for the natural thing. <laughs> along the edge of, and I mean, I was, this stuff was tough. Okay. And they made the uh, our guys were we weren't alone, I'm sure, doing it. They had these cutters that they put on the tanks. Oh. And they just thrash them down and oh. so we could move our stuff through it. I see. Well, that, yeah, I can't think. They called them hedgerows, and they yeah. had a term for what we were making. But all they were was a cutter yeah. that they bolted or assembled some way on the front of these these tanks, German tanks. They go in there and kind of like a oh. bush hog. Huh? Oh, they brush that and clean it out. You bet. Yeah. It worked. Huh. So that was. Uh, the, uh, Utah Beach that you landed on yep. and uh, set up yep. shop there and apparently uh, you uh, stayed there for a couple days or so and then you went to a little town called Biscuiti B-R-I-Q-U-E-B-E-C I don't know how you pronounce I it. Don't you know how to pronounce that Nick? 
Rakupki. Rikikabek. Rikikabek. That sounds better. I think that's a better <laughs> pronunciation than what I did. <laughs> Thanks, Nick. And uh, that he's, he was there then from July 28th to August 7th. Oh, okay. So, uh, of course, this was uh, now it's uh, almost two months uh, after the invasion, yeah. actually. And you're following up uh, the, the troops. We just followed, yeah. Uh, the Germany, we, uh, we followed up to see the Third Army. Mm -hmm. We were with the Third Army. The day we went in, the day we got out. Who was uh, your your general? George Patton. George Patton. Yeah. As you went up through uh, France and so on, did you ever meet me or see him? Never met him, see him a lot of times. So I'm a lot of times. See him taking a pee in the Rhine River one day. Did ya? Okay. Well, well, yeah, great. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, well, George was a, he was a carrot. He was a tough dude, boy, I'll tell you. And all day her pat was coming. Was everybody shaped up. He didn't put up with no monkey with us. That's great. Yeah, that was funny. God. I'll never forget that. He said, well, this is as close as we're going to get, but we'll give him a good bath, Lord. He put <laughs> he, was a, he, was, he got killed, and it, I don't think his driver got killed. Just at the tail end of the war, or maybe it was even after, in a, in a jeep wreck. He was riding with a, the driver. He, he got killed he, you know, in a, with a vehicle rather than you thought that he might have gotten blown up or something happened to him in the service, but no. He. Uh, I don't remember. I, ne I never, I didn't know that. I didn't, yeah, he never got killed in the Jeep. Right, and it's just him and his driver. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. I don't remember what time of it was. I mean, I don't remember if it was right after the war ended or just before it ended mm -hmm. or when, but I, I remember that. Uh, so I had a, yeah. I was thinking about, we were in England, yeah. They oh. had a, a big command headquarters there, and I can't think what town it was in England. Mm -hmm. And uh, all the big leagues, we we never seen any of them, mm -hmm. but we knew that here this is where they were. That there was a, a big, tall, cement brick, whatever I don't know. It was right on the, right on the edge of the. It was, it was, and I can't think what town it was. Whatever was one of the towns that we were in, probably just yeah. before. Maybe it was in Portsmouth, I don't know. Mm -hmm. remember. Well, all the big ones used to be Had gathered over there. Oh, yeah. They, they were playing the, the, the D, They were playing the D-Day oh, yeah, invasion at that point. Day, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, you moved on uh, along there uh, in August, uh, on up through uh, France uh, to uh, uh, another town called F-O-U-G-E-R-E-S. Forgings? Forgeries? Oop, how do you say that one, Nick? F-O-U-G-E-R-E-S. Uh, -E -E <laughs> about as good as I forget. Mm -hmm. Okay. France. You're there for about a week uh, in August, about from the oh. 7th to the 17th. Hello. You said about 10 days. I don't remember any of And then uh, Freddie went on to St. John uh, Deance. Saint is that Saint John Deance? France? I I'm not a very good Frenchman. I can't well, say, I, say I, these I, names I too well. Could, but. When I was there I probably could So I you were there uh, in from the eighteenth uh, in nineteen forty four to August the twenty eighth, another ten days. So you just kept moving right along. Oh, now yeah. you're pretty close to Paris at Fountain Blue. Yeah, Remember we were, being there? Oh yeah, we were from Blue. Now you were there for a, a few days, almost uh, four or five days uh, oh, around Fort Blue. Blue. You're pretty close to Paris. Yeah. Evidently, you got into Paris a couple yeah, times, we were, right? We, we we had a furlough. Okay. And I went into Paris. Uh huh. And I didn't do that a lot as far as I go. Just think of the four of us went in there, and we just wandered around. Asked a lot of questions and we stood in the river there. The yeah, it was Apparently, you bought that book over there. I could have. It's in with your souvenirs. Anyway. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. 
Yeah. Shows a bunch of the things that probably that you saw. Well, we were right down this, this deal, see that deal right there? Yeah. 65,000 of us went through there with the, when we nailed Paris. Okay, let's just take a shot of that. I want to, when you nailed Paris, yeah, that's you what see what that picture is there, Nick? Can you get that? That's right down the street where the uh, um, Arch de Trump, the, say it for me, Nick. Arch de Triumph. Arch de Triumph? Yeah, Arch de, de Triumph mm -hmm. is. And now tell me about that, what he said. Well, when, they, when the Third Army took, uh, took clear Paris out, we, we, they had that one there, but he, he got the whole Third Army together as many as they could. And they went, it was 65,000. 65,000 went, went right, right through, through that. that but they they used it then. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they, well, went, that they went through that. Well, it was quite an ordeal. Now, you also yeah. picked up, got a picture here of uh, a snapshot of the, of the Arch de Triumph and a couple guys standing in front of it there. Uh -huh. Does that happen to be? Yeah, I can't, yeah, I can't. Yeah, I can't. That's two more guys right there. Yeah, but I can't tell which two because they're so darn far away. <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll yeah. have to get that blowed up and then bring back some of our memories. Yeah. But, okay, but Nick, maybe you can get a, a shot of that one too. It's a little bit closer on the on the arch. But that's kind of neat to uh, to know about that. That the, the army, when it got there, did go through that arch. That was kind of a sign of. Hey, we, yeah, we're here. We're here, and uh, Paris that. is. Uh, yeah, Paris is liberated. It was Paris by the place. Beautiful big city. Did you meet any ladies there? See a lot of them. Did you? They, okay. They follow you right along behind. Oh, did they? Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They were glad to see you. They were huh? very glad to see you. They were their Franks. Yeah. <laughs> come from Omaha Beach, we worked our way all the way across here. Here's Paris right there. Yeah. There's, there's Fontainebleau right down here. Here's Paris where you've just gone through that gone through the, the uh, Arche de Triomphe and uh, and now you're going to be heading on up through uh, here toward Germany. Yeah. yeah okay. And uh, we've got some pictures here of there's a castle. Uh, well, you got up here to Luxembourg, first of all. Oh, yeah. Luxembourg. Yeah, we were in Luxembourg. Luxembourg's right there. Oh, now, the Battle of the Balds took place right in front of that. Then the Balds was right in here where they tried to break through. Mm -hmm. Right along Luxembourg there, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so you guys are coming along behind here. Yeah. And the, the fighting basically is up here uh, for that the Battle of the Balds. Now that is getting toward uh, winter time in yeah, Luxembourg, isn't it? I don't well, that. I see that uh, according to your little little uh, uh, sketch here that you had made when sent home, yeah, uh, you were in uh, Fontainebleau uh, in um, would be August 29th. 44 to September uh, 25th. In Fountainbleau? Uh huh. Where are we? In that area right there yeah. by the Battle of the Bulls. Now that's yeah. uh, that's uh, getting close to the time when the Battle of uh, uh, the Bulls uh, was beginning to build up there. And uh, I see that you went on then to Verdun, France, yeah. moved on to there yeah. in uh, October. To November, Verdun, yeah. Then Ish Luxembourg. Ish, Ish Luxembourg. Luxembourg. Yeah, we spent a lot of time in there, in Luxembourg. Yeah, that was November the 29th to April the 3rd. Yeah. So that's right through the winter time. Right winter time. Yeah. And tell me a little bit about how the conditions were there and where you stayed and. Well, we had a, as I recall, we had a pretty decent 
we had a pretty decent set of bar barracks where we, they just to take over something, and, uh -huh. you know, make a barracks that didn't have it look like a camp. And uh, we'd have a couple fifty sitting on the roof, but those guys they'd fly over at night. And in uh -huh. that in that area, as I recall, they used to drop they would drop a paratroopers in at night. Oh, German paratroopers. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So you had to watch out for them. Guys. Yeah, we. You know, now and then you'd hear the fifty squad because you knew that something was going on, mm. but we never got any of them hurt. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, we they kind of petered out as the bulls wore on. Mm -hmm. We got stronger and they got weaker. Uh -huh. It's about what it amounts to yeah. in plain terms. Yeah, yeah the Battle of the Bulge. Yeah, yeah because. Uh, the Battle of the Bulge actually happened on between uh, December the 16th through January 16th. Yeah, about a month. Claim, about a month there. Yeah. They really was really oh, putting this final final they push on. Put the final push and it didn't work. They come pretty close a couple times, oh, didn't they? Good, good, good. Good. You could You could they hear. They didn't bother us any because we were always back from. Far them. enough. Uh -huh. Yeah, and if they didn't wait far enough, they'd move us back. Oh, yeah. They wanted to keep that. That yeah, they've got to keep yes. all the repair and yeah. equipment from getting captured too. Absolutely. Because we had shops where those shops were quite, you know, they, they just like a big, just like a, 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 a factory down to Lansinger, Pontiac, where yeah. the car shops are. They just yeah. they would be not that scale, but I mean they could do everything they could do there. Now, did they? They were mobile then, right? Oh, they moved right along with you. Well, that was a semi. Semis? In semi, a lot of it was in the semis. Uh -huh. Where they the all assemble there and then yeah. they just pull them together and yep. as, as parts <laughs> and make a factory, huh? Yeah, a lot and of it was. Yeah. You quite an engineering feat to do uh, that. Oh, Set yeah. it up waste time, you you Especially time. when you're moving every week and, or every month. Every week or two or three or whatever. Yeah, it was a job, but they, they, it was really, we had a good, a good captain, nice guy. Oh, yeah. Like our, Captain was an Evans, and our first sergeant was an Evans. Oh, what a! Uh, and both of them were one was from New York, one was from, from uh, Ohio. Uh huh. Yeah. Now a lot of you guys are all from Michigan, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of you were too. Michigan and Illinois. Uh huh. Around Joliet. Uh. Well, just Illinois, period. Yeah. A lot of Michigan. A lot of Michigan. A few in Ohio, and a few scattered out, you know, we had some from New York, not many, maybe half a dozen. Uh, now, when you were there in uh, in uh, Luxembourg, could you, could you hear the fighting or the, you see any evidence of it? or Not too much. Not much, huh? No. Okay. Uh, we weren't back far enough. The yeah. only thing is, or we'd see the, we had the evidence of it as if they if they knock, you know, block a road off with a tank or something, we yeah. have to take the wreckers out and pull them out of the road or drag them. We, all we do is just hook a cable on them, drag them off the other road and let them go. Uh -huh. Just to clean things up so we can move, move our through. guys can move through. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, so you were there, like they say, through April. Then, then it yeah. says you went to uh, Germany, Lich, L-I-C-H, Germany. Yeah. Now, was that where you saw the castle? You went to see a castle one time there. Maybe. You had a couple pictures of a castle. Yeah. Or was that on further into Germany? A little just further? Really, I look, I'm just trying to think here where, what town that was. It's a big, it was a big town. And they had this big prison. And that's where that... That was that one German that they got, and we used to go to when we'd go and eat, or we, we were in that area. I can't think of what town it was because it, it, it was a, a quite a large city, and I don't think I come across any out there or, or in my notes or anything. But this one guy, all we do here every time we go by, he'd be walking around sucking out a cigarette. He was, German, the, he was he, a general or he was, Yeah, he was all the top dogs that they, they captured. Oh, yeah. yeah. We, we have some, that was a, the, the 
mess hall where we, I think it was, I think we were in Brook. Mm. I think, I'm not positive that. And we'd go in there and eat. Our, yes. We had our mess hall there and eat. Mm. Well, we were uh, going through, through, uh, through Germany here. And uh, we had talked about a little bit about uh, um, uh, Würzburg, Germany, a little bit, which is right there. Würzburg is right here. Oh, okay. And so we just passed Frank Frankfurt, and uh, uh, we uh, we know that uh, the, the timing there was uh, that you were in the, about the, that area was. Uh, about uh, uh, in April, uh, you were in Lynch, uh, Germany from April 4th to um, April the 23rd in 45 now. And uh, then you went to uh, a place called Erlangen, Erlangen Germany. Erlanger? E yeah, E R L A N G E N. Erlanger? Erlingen, yeah. Germany, from April 24th okay. to April 12th. And remember, um, uh, B Day was declared on the 8th, on the 8th of, of May. Of May, yeah. Yeah. And uh, now, you know, uh, it's interesting that uh, we had a couple papers here. One of them is on May the 7th here. So stars and Stripes Forever, on May 7th, and it says, Complete German Surrender Expected Soon. Okay? And uh, Third yeah. Army Tanks Capture Pilsen. Yeah. Seventh Army Still Needs Resistance. And then, on the 8th, Tuesday, May 8th, 1945, yeah. E2, War Ends. Eastern Theater Operation War ends. Unconditional surrender of all German forces was announced yesterday by the German radio in Flensburg. Okay, U.S. celebrates victory second time in 10 days. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I <laughs> Whatever it said, anyway. Yeah. So that was quite, do you remember that happening? No. You don't remember that I don't today, really, huh? Not really, it, it, no, I don't. I don't just, well, I know mm -hmm. that right soon after that, this picture was taken, and it was taken of the 804th uh, Ordnance Group. That's your group. 904. 904. 904 right? Heavy Auto Maintenance Ordnance Company, Bruck, Germany. Yep. Bruck. You were there. Yeah, we sure were. Okay. Bruck, that was a good town. Yeah. Bruck. There's a... Uh, Remember uh, Little Bell over here? What the hell was her name? Nelva. Nelva. Nelva Ward. Nelva Ward? Yeah, her, that's her dad, right? Right there. Oh, right out in front here. Yeah. Out in the guard? Yeah, Don Ward. That was Don Ward. He was from Lowell here. Yeah, right? he showed What? You have to show her that. Okay. Yeah, okay. So you're back in there somewhere. Oh, yeah, I don't know. I don't remember. No, I wouldn't know. Don't know, but no, it's hard to see. I'll tell. I've got the helmets on and stuff. It's yeah, hard to see. Yeah, there's Art Gross and Dylan Kronecki and Lon Moore and a dumb mess up there from here and that was, that was Max Buddy working with okay. for years at GM. Anyway, you got a pretty good shot of that, Nick. That must have been after the after the war yeah, was uh, that, 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 probably that, getting that, ready that, to come home probably. I would guess. Or well, getting you ready to go to Japan one or the well, other. Well, that's what we were doing, getting ready. That, that's what they we did. We had so much free time because we were just all they were doing was making sure we had everything all that every company had what their their uh, their list of uh, of the stuff that the, each company had. They went all through them, you know. And, you were just like starting out from scratch. New inventory, huh? New inventory, there you go. Okay. Inventory. Now, yeah. it says you were in, uh, moved a little bit again, and you were in, uh, in uh, Perth, F-U-R-T-H, Germany. Yeah. 
afterwards. And I believe you had a, some pictures here of that castle. <coughs> There's the castle here. Yeah. Now, whether it was in Würzburg or whatever. I don't either. I don't know. It was in Germany there somewhere. Yeah. When you had some free time. And I so I imagine it's about I would this imagine time. it's about it, but I didn't do a very good job of but there is the uh, is the castle, and this is a close up of the castle. And, there are some uh, beautiful places here. Now that Würzburg, Würzburg, there was uh, it shows a picture down here, and that's the ruins of Würzburg. In other words, it had been bombed out pretty Probably, bad. Probably, yeah. Well, and it was really there. wasn't much left there, and it was a lot of a lot of the buildings were pretty well shot there. But over on the side here, <clears throat> it showed up barracks. Do you remember staying in that barracks? No. It says my barracks. No, I don't, but we, I'm sure we did. Mm -hmm. It looks familiar, yet I don't remember. Probably was that one that you talked about sitting on the top. It had a couple of machine guns on the top of the roof. Or Might have been. Could have been. It looks like that it. Because that was a, yeah, that was a, that was a Firth, was that? It's Firth. It says yeah, on the back. Balls. Yep. Oh, that would, well, that would have been a little bit before that. Yeah. That would have been. So. That was during the ball deal of the night. That was a riot. Now, you had a little free time there from May, June, July, August. You must have got around a little bit to some sightseeing there. Things well, you see. Let's see, the war ended with. B Day was made on May the eighth. Yeah, May the eighth. Mm -hmm. And we didn't get home until the second of January. I think we uh -huh. we got we pulled into New York. In, uh, in, in, uh, well, where they docked the ships. Yeah. We pulled under the oh, aircraft carrier. I can't okay. think what it was. Let's tell me a little bit about what you were doing in that time there when you had a little free time. I know that there was a, well, a we, championship you know, of see, ball. All summer, of course, there was, we didn't have a great deal what they were doing preparing us for Japan. Sure. There wasn't that much for us to do. Once you had your equipment, what do you do with it? Yeah. You have your, yeah, right. everything is there, it's ready to go. Mm -hmm. So we played a lot of ball, went to a lot of ball games in Nuremberg, Soldier Field. Yeah. So, and we went every day. That was, you can kind of get some shots of that. Mm -hmm. That's the championship uh, scorecard there, I guess. Of, yeah, uh, there was uh, the championship special service. For the, it was the third and the seventh third. Uh -huh. And we played a little bit of a World Series, I guess. It was okay. so long as I kind of forgot about it. Do you recognize but, any of those players oh, yeah. on there? Oh, yeah, you Blackwell. Uh -huh. He pitched for Cincinnati. Okay. Afterward, yeah. And, uh, Johnny Guarasta, he played right field for somebody that I can't think who. Uh, Ramazzotti, he played short for I can't remember what club anymore. Van Morrell played with the Braves second base. Yeah. Uh, but uh, there was quite a few of them that were major leaguers. They well, you played, saw some good ball there, then, oh, didn't they you? Oh, they played some good ball. They played some good ball. They had good crowds too. Well, I see that uh, apparently you you took uh, you took in a few of those games for sure. You got a little proof of it right there because yeah. there's a picture. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, we had a lot of fun. We enjoyed it, but then the war ended. Of course, mm -hmm. was, the war was all done, and then we uh, when the when the Final came out when the uh, armistice was signed. Mm -hmm. Well, we were, it wouldn't take us long to get, that uh, was in May, was it? Yeah. Yep, May the 8th. Yep. And we, I, what we done that to us, what we done just that right there. Ball games and yeah. you know, getting our stuff ready. We, because we gradually worked, it took us till we didn't leave. The trip of Europe until we got home New Year's Eve, so we must have left December. It must have been we must have left over there in December. I guess I don't just remember too much of that. I remember coming, coming back and then 
stainless steel American ship, man, was just clean and great. So you, 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 just, you don't really remember the day you got the order to go home, huh? No. No? no but you I just don't. knew you were getting ready for quite a while. And it probably. just took us, yeah, it was just a dragged out deal. Cause, yeah. And yeah. you thought you were going to Japan. Yeah, we thought we were going so to that Japan. Wasn't, uh, and they were prepared us for Japan. That was a bittersweet uh, yeah, yeah, uh, we thinking of what you needed to do, Lord. wasn't it? So yeah. anyway, that, you yeah, see, that was, uh, the timing there was... Uh, was at the end of uh, December in uh, in forty five, yeah. and uh, so <clears throat> you <clears throat> you uh, got on. A, tell me about that ship. You told me about it a little bit before, but uh, it was a, called the Liber was that a Liberty ship? Yeah, they called it Liberty <clears throat> ship. Now, yeah. You came probably out of France. You got back to France, or I don't, I, I don't know. There wasn't the, the, the ours were called Liberty ship. Yeah, and they were just spotless. We'll uh, make a copy of this, Bob, of your discharge paper, and right. uh, and put it in the uh, folder with your your uh, your uh, at the museum in your file. Right. So that'll all be filed down right. there for whatever, safekeeping too. Whatever okay. you do, will be fine. All right. Now. Uh, these, it's, it's interesting. Uh, interesting that I looked down there and I saw that uh, that uh, uh, you uh, re-enlisted. Yeah. On January this the third. I was in the reserves for three. Years. January 1946. Okay. And uh, for three years. Mm -hmm. That was, he was a corporal at that time, and Corporal I, Robert Stewart. And I missed out on, which one was it? Corbinian Yeah, that was yeah. the one. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I missed out by about three months. So, yeah, that's when you got your three yeah, years I was up, out of it, and yeah. then you were discharged from the yeah. reserves. Okay? Yeah. All right. Anyway, you uh, you were there at New York there, and then you were at Camp Atterbury, or yeah, Indiana. And then, uh, how did you uh, how did you get back to Grand Rapids? By train. By train. Yeah. Who both. was there to meet you? My folks. Your folks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now Marie hadn't gotten into this thing at all oh, yet, no. had she? Huh? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, Marie, tell me a little bit about uh, the war was over and uh, the, how did the people feel around town? You were in. Oh my were. gosh, he was at the drugstore. Oh, everybody was just so excited and so everything. 
and Chris let us have a day off, myself and a couple of the other young people. Oh, okay. And, uh, and Ruby said, oh, well, for everybody go on. She said, oh, she and Chris, they would just run up. They didn't need it all the circuit because everybody was spreading all over. You have to understand that uh, Marie worked at Christian Drugstore. And Christian Drugstore had a big fountain, uh, soda fountain, and so ice cream. So, believe it or not, you, you tell your kids now, don't you dare go out and get shite. Well, I mean, we did. Oh. But they didn't think anything of I mean, it. You got in anybody's car back then. Yeah. We really did. We went just to Edge of Law, got picked up, took to Grand Rapids, <laughs> had a big celebration. And it was, I suppose it was 11 o'clock at night. We got to the Edge again, got a ride back. Home? Why would no more do that today no. than we have the moon? No. No? And, and so, but everybody, I just said, they were just, the minute they did that, just, yeah. just everybody was just so excited, so excited. And yelling yeah. and carrying. Hey, you told me a little bit a while ago about the, during the war, while you were back, there was some, some about the Japanese that were rounded up in this area that yeah. nobody knew whether they then, were they, they, spies they or not. Mm -hmm. At this Pantland Hotel, the big hotel in Grand Rapids, Pantland was, I think, the biggest at that time. Okay. And, um, but they would come out to the soda fountain. Okay. See, and that's how then the other gals would be there. And just because they talked to them, oh my, you know, the older people and just other, I mean, men too, not just yeah, the mothers Japanese. and everything. Yeah, the Japanese, we were fighting the Japanese. Just, yeah, yeah, they uh -huh. just told those girls they had, they couldn't do that. Of course, they shouldn't have told them that because then they did. They did it more, huh? Yeah, but I don't know how those kids did get out of the pantlin, but they come out to the soda fountain. Uh -huh. Must be in my day. So or I don't, leave I don't or know something. how long they were there, but they yeah. were there quite a while. Uh huh. Uh -huh. That's an interesting little side. This is a little backward, Marie, but I like a little bit of your background in history. Uh, tell me about your your parents, uh, where they came from, and. Well, who they, and their names and my dad came over from Eschlo, Germany. Okay. And uh, I think right around 1900. I'm uh -huh. not positive either. And I know we got a lot of things on it just here with Ruby stuff that she sure. kept, and we, and I, we, the girls were just starting to get it together. But I know he wasn't here too long, two three years, right in there, and. He married my mother in 1924, okay. and he had some relatives in Grand Rapids. That's how he happened to come, come here from Germany. What did he do for a living? Well, he was in the service over in Germany, oh. and of course, you know, they weren't all that nice to them. Mm -hmm. And they had horses, and they had to jump where he had to jump a ditch, different mm -hmm. ones with their horses. They didn't do it right. They had to get down and do it themselves, and he tore a heart valve. Oh. So he had medical leave to get over here, and oh. he never went back. Oh. Okay. And even when his folks died, they wrote him something about how much money he would got from all that to come back. He would. He didn't oh, fight. He, he would back. go back. Go back but he worked in a factory in Grand Rapids. I know. Of course, we lived just out here on the farm. By Fallsford Park. Okay. In fact, a lot of that was our property. And your name at that time was when you was Icon. Icon. Okay. And Ruby was your sister yes. who worked in the drugstore along with you. Uh huh. Okay. Joe worked there too. Okay. And uh, Thelma had the little restaurant. Yeah. She was your sister also. Uh huh. Yeah. Irma taught school. Mm -hmm. And Roxy did a lot of things. I mean, Roxy Hunter. No, no. Roxy Hunter is my cousin. Is your cousin? Okay. Roxy Sullivan. Sullivan. Okay. And uh, she just she worked for for uh, there in Richmond. I know when he had a restaurant. She worked in Saga Talk summers, and she just went around and did stuff like that. All right. Now, uh, now uh, this uh, these young guys are coming back here to out of the service. And Bob. Uh, you uh, got back home. You got to you Grand Rapids by train, right? Your folks met you there. You come home. Where did you did you stay with your folks here then? Oh yeah. yeah. And uh, then you. Right there we lived. 
pretty soon you uh, yeah. you uh, you went back to work at the at the uh, light and power. Yeah. Hmm? Uh, Who is the, uh, uh, the superintendent then? Well, Frank McMahon was there. Frank McMahon. Yeah. Been there. He was there for like 50 years. I think. <laughs> really? So yeah. I think it yeah. Was, yeah. About 50 years. Yeah. See, now this is uh, 1946. Yeah. So he was there even before about the oh. turn of the century. Oh, yeah. I, I'm sure yeah. I'm right. That I could. Mm -hmm. uh, he was there until about in the 70s. When he did it, more come. He was. He replaced him. No way. We didn't have the kids yet. No way. We all got killed when. All right. We got. Um, we got. Uh, we we'll we'll get to that. We're pretty close here. 1945, 1955. You worked for a Little Light and Power under Frank McMahon. Yeah. And uh, what was your duties there at? Um, with uh, with the light and power company now after you come back, you started doing line duty or well yeah you? I did a very very little bit of that mm -hmm. at first anyway huh? oh I never did much light work uh -huh. because I read all, I read most of the meters okay but all the farmland meters and water was every what we drink every three months we read water. Okay. Because uh, Light and Power at that time was in charge of the water department too. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. And the street department. And the street, the yeah. whole nine yards, yeah. So that was a little different than it is today. Oh, yeah, you bet. Uh, Much better situation we got today. It was all in a big of a city. You see, Barney Olson was the first city manager. Mm -hmm. He came here in 1960. Oh, wait, okay. no, wait, they all got killed in 53. Well, you tell me a little bit about that. You uh, I mean, you brought that up. Uh, that was while you were working for uh, Light and Power. Yeah. And Lou, uh, what was his name? Lou what? Lou Hoover. Hoover. Yeah. Okay. He lived up on East Main Street. He lived the first house east of the, the bowling alley. Or the, the bowling alley there. Yeah. 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 Okay. Where the uh, yeah, now um, uh, were you there that day that he? Yeah. Okay. Can you tell me about that? How that accident happened? Well, we just strictly uh, we don't. Chuck Lawyer was with it. it was lawyer and I and and, and Leo and we were changing the transformer in that yard. Or what was that people's name on it? As I drive by, I can usually I think of it. Yeah, it was up by Parnell. Or so I can't you know, think of like for years I never I could wake up the night and think of their name. Yeah. They were nice people. And he, we were in the front yard and he would get ready to change the transformer. And in the front I don't remember off and that was so many years ago. But he hit he had to he he hit something and got a direct contact with it that was seventy two hundred volts. Wow. And he was just like that was all blue. Oh tonight. My goodness. Just that quick. Yeah. We, we, we were talking and I were getting ready. I don't think we were getting ready to pull the transformer up. He was mm -hmm. getting ready to, we had a, 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 a cast or a, an iron deal that we pulled up that, that set up on the cross, on the cross arms and then we had a block of tackle that set up and then we pulled up and made the guy up there, he did okay. hang the transformer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. Leo was just a super man on day. Great. How did Great you love. how did you get him down or how did that you know I don't really don't remember, remember I huh? don't remember uh -huh. I don't remember we I'm sure we must have called right back to the office because I don't just think yeah. who was well Tom was the yeah Tom was the superintendent too. That's back when you try climbed the poles with your with with cleats. Oh, yeah. You know, that's, that's spikes that's just a great deal. deal. And, yeah. and they've got some new it looks to me like They've got another new one or a new truck. Yeah, with, with a, a, with another lift on. It's great. Yeah. Boy, I'll tell you, so we, you know, we climb every pole. We used to climb them 60 footers along the, along the river every now and then to check uh -huh. the, the uh, cross arms out, make sure it was all tight, 
but if they like bowl screen replacement or whatever, oh, yeah. it was a lot of work for it. And that was back when light and power went way out to the farmers, too, before oh, yeah. it was sold off to consumers. See, they, so they went to, uh, I can't remember, I could tell you, it mm -hmm. almost seems like they used to say, I read the farm, I read the farm roots for quite a few years. Every month I read them. Uh -huh. I, read, I read this side of town, water in, in, in life, read the light every month. And I read all the farmlands. I think it was 80 miles of farmland. Yeah. I think it, it started right north of, of the power plant, where I read mm -hmm. all. Yeah. Keene Township went through Cannesburg, uh, which the tail is of it. Murray Lake, Gavin Lake, Crooked Lake. Oh, yeah. All those areas. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now, he was kind of doing that. Uh, he used to come into the to, to the soda fountain. Is that how you got acquainted with him then? Uh, yes, it was. Because uh, that was 1946 when he came back. Yeah, so, he to now, tell me about this, Marie. How yeah. you, uh, how that, you. Uh, that was, uh, his folks always had the Life magazine saved because that had. That was one of the top magazines yeah. at that time, and uh, they had the, a lot of them had them saved because you just never could get enough of them. Mm -hmm. And his folks would come. Then when he came home, he came in after and asked it for it with Stewart's name on. Okay. That was the first I'd ever seen him. I didn't know him before he went in the service. Okay, yeah, all right. So then uh, he came in more often, did he? <laughs> yeah. You put an email. Yeah, he'd come in more often. And yeah. And like I said, we used to walk up the Kaiser's kitchen. Oh, okay, then he'd ask you to house, walk up the Kaiser's. And uh -huh. then we'd walk all the way home. Okay. He lived here, and I lived up on Dave, the Dave Clark. Oh, yeah. Bill, Chris, and Madeline, or Dave Bill Clark, Madeline, always used yeah. to always ride bicycles out to tell us where to ride. Madeline would fall oh. off the bicycle. Oh, man. Guaranteed, he'd fall off the bicycle. But that was it. I mean, you that entertained was, yourself. Don't yeah, that that was your, yeah, that was the entertainment. Your, and the nowadays, it's all getting together. Yeah, the simple things you did to, yeah. to get to know, know each other. TV was out when we got married in 48, but we didn't get one until yeah. 1950. So 1948, you got married. Yes. He, and he asked you? Well, I don't really know. You know, it was leap year that year. I might have been oh. desperate. I don't oh. know. Desperate, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> no, but we had planned it for spring. Then his dad died. Oh, so he's... then we held off to September. Oh, you, did did you did he you have an engagement or did you have an engagement? Oh, well, um, no, we did not really, huh? Not anything big deal. Not anything like that. But, uh, we just had a good time. We had a lot of fun. Sure. Lots yeah, that little, that little old Plymouth, 1932, and that's all we had to drive. Okay, that was his dad's. That was your dad's yeah. car. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so you go in this coupe? Yeah, seeing fun. that his dad had died before we got married, so mm -hmm. he just more or less. And was he was so. mm -hmm. <laughs> Pete was the Pete was a sailor. Pete was working there then. Uh -huh. Bill Collins was a was the uh, mechanic, okay. and he paid three hundred and fifty dollars for it. Three hundred and fifty dollars, nineteen thirty-two uh, Plymouth coupe, yeah. and what you're still driving today, real runs out in the shed That's there. In the yeah. I've seen you drive it many times, parades and so on, and uh, just to drive it. Now, okay, um, and uh, so you got planning to get married, and. Uh, and your dad died just before uh, you planned on September the 1st, I believe. Uh, my notes tell me that 1948. Yeah. And uh, who was your minister? Or how did you get married? Reverend Wound. Reverend, Reverend, Reverend Wound. He was a congregational church. Yeah. Was that right? Yeah. 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 Right. Nice man. Nice man. Now, Marie, tell me about your family that you raised then. You raised uh, a couple girls? Oh, yes. We lost one. We, we lost the first one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but um, then we were, let's see, 48. Amy was born in 1960, mm -hmm. and Sue in 62. In 58, mm -hmm. we lost the first. It would have been a girl, too. Oh. 
Yeah. You know, uh, we were in a happier and all get out, thinking that, oh, today's the day, you know. Yeah. But, um. Well, you got two nice girls here. And tell me about your grandkids. And Amy was married and had uh, Ashley. Mm -hmm. And uh, that one didn't work out. Okay. So? And so they were, they lived here back mm -hmm. home, mm -hmm. Amy and Ashley. So Ashley had Ashley until she was almost 10. All right. And then Amy got married to Jeff Schramm, and then they have two little girls now. Well, isn't six that Six and nice. seven. <laughs> so you've got yeah. more grandkids. Yeah. Yeah. And then Ashley will be 21. Okay. And then the Sue, of course, has two. In her, what are her? First boy. We have one grandson. Okay. What's, what's Sue's kids' names? Uh, his, her name, the kids' names are Carson. And Jada. Okay. Jada was here and this morning. They're the oldest Correct. and the youngest of those last four. All right. And when they have their birthday, like now, they're five, six, seven, and eight. Uh -huh. And then there's a boy, too? Yeah, he's the oldest. Uh -huh. And his Carson. name is? He's eight. Carson. Carson. Okay. <laughs> well, by golly, that going in to get that Life magazine is worth it after all. I'm glad. Ah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Could okay. have done, could have done better. <laughs> Bob, uh, anytime, uh, Mary, that you think of something here about things that are happening in town, just jump in, okay? <laughs> now, Bob, you uh, you were working uh, there with uh, Frank McMahon, and then uh, Mr. Olson came along, city manager, right? Well, in between there was Tom Moore. Or Tom Moore, okay. He, he was not a city manager. He was a, uh, he was the the uh, light and power light and superintendent, power. right? Okay. Superintendent, yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice man. He lived right in the corner, uh, well, where Regan's live now. Dr. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And you got a promotion, didn't you, about that time, or a different job situation, or were well, you still working? Well, yeah, that's where it was strictly water. Strictly water. Yeah. Just the then, water department. Yeah, but through the help to get my, my licenses and so forth. You had to go to Lansing? Yeah, you? I had to go down to Lansing. Uh, Met some people down there uh -huh. who were one of them came always around because they always the small towns where they don't have licensed operators mm -hmm. they they come around a little more. Mm -hmm. So, but I I was very fortunate. Okay. Well, it was because I had uh, Tom. We were up at Tom and I we went to Ann, I had to go to Ann Arbor for. Oh, just a couple of three days when I when I first got first got into the deal for some reason because there was some something going on here that they want me to be a part of the scene or, or whatever I don't remember many years ago huh? and then but Tom was just a super man nice man honest busted his butts for the guys and and they put the screws to him and got rid of him hmm. because he had to spend money. Everything had run down, so I was, yeah. the whole town, utilities, everything, the pay, you know. There you was, had to get it back, maintenance back up. So. With money, and, and they didn't have the money, you know, and he had, he could see it, because, mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, they, they made a good one mm -hmm. for him, and they got rid of him. Then he went to Marquette Nation. Where did, where did he go to Indiana? Rensselaer. Rensselaer, Indiana. We, we drove down there to visit him. Oh, yeah. Nice, nice family. Okay. Yeah. Then, anyway, then, uh, so, uh, now you uh, you worked under a whole bunch of city managers then. Oh, yeah. well. There's Bernie Olson. Bernie Olson was the first That's city fine. manager. Okay. Then Blair Bacon, maybe? And then Bacon, another good guy. Yeah. We got a card for him. He lives in, Cal in Florida. Uh-huh. Every year, I, but he was he was he was here during the sewer separation program. Okay. In '73. That was a big project. I better believe it. it. I'll tell you, he done a good job. Separated the sewer from the from the yeah. from the yeah. from the uh, Dorman Sanitary. They yeah. separated them and put a lot of water stuff in. And then after after uh, Todd Moore, or after or Blaine Bacon with Ray Quayda, Gabe uh -huh. Ray. Yeah. And he was the top of them all. You really got along good with Ray then. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ray. Well, you got along with everybody. 
<laughs> well, yeah. I tried it. Yeah. yeah. It isn't too hard to, if they're decent to, you know, yeah. and play yeah. fair. That's a, that's a, fairness is a lot of light. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, you can't, but I, I got along good with all of them. Yeah. Ray was, well, they're all I think. For Bernie Olson, probably, was the hardest thing to work for. Mm -hmm. Because he had a drinking problem. Oh, okay. And he had a big drink. Oh, yeah. He lost his leg and he lost his leg in the service. I see. Didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. Now, but uh, he, his family, good, good, the two of them are state police officers. Mm -hmm. uh, After Ray Queda came, uh, then they hired Pasquale. Like yeah, right. Right when, now, yeah. Did Ray, you work Ray, on your Pasquale for a no, while? No. No. I retired. In, in the last day of the year, in 1986, five, and Ray retired two months later. He was done. Oh. Then Pasquale. Then oh, the, so you then, just missed him. Huh? Yeah, I don't know how long it was before they got. But he seems to be a, yeah. doing a good job. Yeah. Now you, uh, that means you retired, you had put in uh, 40 some years. 45. 45 years with the city, total yeah. service. Yeah. That's a lot of, that's a lot of, a lot of service to our community. Bob. And it wasn't all, you know, you're, you're well, you're liked by a, about probably 50% I guess. People are always, you know, the thing of it is, it's, it's, it's always kind of, Keep me off. Is <laughs> people blame the individual when the city makes rules and regulations and changes. <laughs> yeah. It's the guy that delivers the message that the messenger instead. Yeah, right, right. And I, oh, well, I got along a lot. I think you, I, I, uh, I, you I, mended a lot of fences, Bob. And I think you, you. I can remember working with you many times. So, I, I uh, always. I mean, I. You were fair. I fair. I was people knew fair. You, you got to be fair. Yep. If you're not fair, well, that's, that's that, then you got. Then now you've you got done a lot trouble. of you've done a lot of service work too, and I know it's oh, one yeah. of the things you did. Showboat was going along pretty good. Oh yeah. Uh, during those times, and you were always involved with volunteering at Showboat. Oh yeah. And uh, tell me a little bit about what your main job was, my main thing you did uh, with Showboat. I just run. I run the spotlights. Okay. Now those were spotlights that were up, one on each end of the of the bleachers area. Way well, up to the top. They right? were up at the top right in the center. <clears throat> there was a little platform deal that we made. Or I didn't make it. Yeah. Um, it was Frank and the guys made it mm -hmm. before I ever was had anything to do with the show board. Uh, but we had a we we made it, it used to be he crawled we had a we had a oh God, how big was it? Was a forty foot extension, I think. Mm -hmm. He'd crawl up that extension. Well I mm -hmm. said, This kid ain't going up that extension. <laughs> So we made a deal we could go up the front. Mm -hmm. We made it just out of two by fours and a little small. We, we had a trap door gate we could get a little oh, back from out. the top of the yeah, bleachers. Yeah, on top. Uh -huh. There, that was okay. Yeah. yeah, we had a lot of, had a lot of fun with sure. No, that was, uh, okay, so you had to, tell me what was your duty on on those. Uh, did you, were you the head uh, a spotlight person and well, another yeah, guy on the other side? Well, yeah, we had radio hookups. Okay. Uh, with whoever was, there used to be a guy running that came from Chicago over here. I thought, remember his name for years. You probably don't remember. Ron Showboat and Joe Golden? No. No. What was that fellow's name? He, he wasn't, he, he knew what he was doing. He didn't know it was a, the people that ran the put in the um, wires over to the... That well, was, that was Jared Moore. Jared Moore. Oh, okay. The Myers and Moore. Huh? Had a shop in Grand Rapids. Okay. Sold trains. And they sold electric trains wow. and, oh. and things of that matter, okay. and radios. And anyway, you had so you had radios then to talk to. Oh yeah, we had we had radios. And uh, did you have to meet some of the stars? Met most of them. Mm -hmm. Shore was my favorite. She was. Why was she your favorite? Oh, she was just a nice person. Yeah. She just is like we are. Yeah. You know, she was no big. And here she was, a, one of the most popular yeah. people in, in Hollywood, I guess. Isn't that what I told you too, Nick? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, she was my just, favorite. Just too. a great yeah. person. And I got along real good with, who was the one that, 
Milton Burrow? Milton Burrow. Yeah. You, you tell me that story. Marie, you got a little story to tell about Milton Burrow, don't you? Well, you and the girls? With the, with the girls? Yeah. yeah. We, didn't, oh, yeah. we didn't know whether he would see us or not, but the girls were just little. Uh -huh. And uh, they wanted to buy a pillow. They had low pillows on them. Oh, okay. They wanted to, couldn't they take him one? Take, take so Milton we didn't Burrow. know. We went over to his trailer. Not, and we were surprised. Boy, he invited us in, and he was happy to see the kids, and he thanked them for the pillow. And, so it really was wasn't that, wasn't that nice? They always okay. remembered that. All right. Yeah, but who was it? Was it you that said he... Well, we, I had, uh, he was, had a bad day the day yeah. that, I, yeah. that, okay. I, that I saw him uh, when I had to find out about his ushering. He was having a bad day. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, but uh, that, everybody has a bad day yeah. now and then. So the that's the way that goes. The one I heard most flack about was when <laughs> the, the young colored singer, the girl. Mm -hmm. When she came. Uh, Leslie Uggams? Yeah. Uh -huh. I really, honestly, never heard anything good about her. Oh, yeah? yeah. And I used to yeah. watch her on TV before yeah. she came, and yeah. I just thought... Well, we had to wait the show, you know, for because she wouldn't go on the show, because she didn't have a carpet for her dancers, mm -hmm. and so the end men had to do their act, everybody else had to do that, and it wasn't until 9.30 before she'd come out, Business. because we flew that, we flew a... Uh, we flew a um, carpet in from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and it got into Grand Rapids Airport in the afternoon before we knew it that, really? that she wouldn't go on. She said she wouldn't go on until the carpet was here. If you don't get it, I'm not going on that cement floor with my dancers. And she wouldn't. We had to get it from Grand Rapids, bring it out here as soon as the plane flew in with it, chartered the plane to bring it. Got it on the, Isn't rolled it out on there, and it was like 9.30 before she would go on. And on. she wouldn't do her act with no, the end men there either. Would you? No, they had to get off the stage. Yeah. I just thought yeah, I'd it was, never uh, heard a good but thing But that's about a, that was the trend, what happened about that time, and that was one of the demises of Showboat, I think. The, the stars just got too greedy. Too they greedy. got too, too, big, too big, big for their pants. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, exactly. now that's why I'm so happy the way Showboat is back, doing what it's supposed to do, something for the community and it's doing it uh, down there where you bring your lawn chair in you sit down you have a nice evening of entertainment and, and you go away now that's what to me that's what show what we for us to pick right. ourselves up the community up by its bootstraps during the depression i got and uh, uh, look the crowds they have at those yeah we have nice crowds we have uh from 800 yeah. to 1500 yeah. people really so, yeah Oh, yeah. Oh, that's great. You'll have to come down next next summer. I, never, you know, I, I, I like them when they have their music to like that. Uh, yep. if you play. Now, back to Bob here, Bob and Marie. One other thing you told me, an interesting little thing about when you worked at Christian Drugstore, you couldn't, uh, uh, you couldn't uh, uh, get on the, um, uh, couldn't hear the show. You couldn't go to the show, could you? No. No? But... We had a friend that fixed that up. Okay. He, what that happened? Was, Jared Moore at the time, though, he did the, all uh, the electrical stuff for the show. Mm -hmm. He hooked up all the sound okay. systems and mm -hmm. stuff. And so all of a sudden, over he comes, swimming across the river there. Swimming from, across the river? Yeah, from the showboat tarp to the back door. The, to the back door of the, yeah, up the back drug store. store. Okay. And he yelled at us to get a ladder or something for him. And he came and hooked up our radio. That was by the end of the fountain, and we could hear the whole show. <laughs> he bring he take a wire across for free. Yeah. Or was, it was it was I don't it wasn't know wireless. How he did it, but he came yeah. across. At that time, it wasn't but, wireless. They didn't have wireless. Yeah, no. It had to be a wire. He's he, he pulled across. He, the, yeah. And then the boat came right around there, though. So I think he had to yeah. end up getting kind of attached to the building. Uh huh. Finally, because the boat swung around there every yeah. night. Every night. Yeah. Yeah, we hung out the back doors all the time, and I and Mr. Avery and Chris, they were still decorating it, yet as it was going by. <laughs> oh, it used to be it was so quite a production. Oh, there was, there was another good fun. guy, yeah. I would, Ray yes. Avery. Yes. He had a brewery store. He was a school teacher. He taught me oh, algebra. Yeah. Then yeah, had, he, when he retired, he had the, the, uh, oh, yeah. uh, the jewelry store yeah. right next to the, the Christmas yeah. drug yeah. store. They lived right down in the corner. Uh -huh. They built the house yeah. at Jim Wasowski. Uh, okay. Jim Wasowski's house here on the corner. Yeah, right. They're High in uh, King too. Street. Hmm? Yeah. 
but, but he was a they're nice. Remember which God they were a good pair. They're nice, nice people. All right, now, so you retired. What did you do for hobbies, Bob, when you retired here? <coughs> yeah, what? Taking well, care of your car? I'm not a car person. I, all I, I, I'm a car person to the fact that I like to keep them in good shape and keep yeah. them up. They but look I'm nice. not mechanically inclined to do nothing. They look nice. Boxing. They always look nice. But I, uh, I have the yard. And your yard always showed it, too. I come across the pictures here today mm -hmm. of you and the boys when you put the addition on the garage there. Oh, we did yeah. work on your garage. Yeah. After that, so you're retired. Yeah, okay, 19, uh, around 1985? Yeah, in there because uh, you, you did it in the fall. You got it all done, please. You put the new roof, added the roof onto the garage. And it's good. Boy, I'm ever glad I did that. Oh, Lordy. All right. Yeah. Now, were you, uh, Bob, were you ever uh, a member of uh, any of the uh, civil organizations or civic organizations or any of the service organizations? No. Nope. Like the Lions or the... Oh, the service no. ones you are. You were the DFW? You were the Legion. Well, that was American Legion. The DFW, DFW, yeah, DFW. sure. I brought the Roman Maloney and I were two of the first ones to join them. American Legion after the war. Oh, okay. Matter of fact, Ruby signed me up, uh -huh. and uh, then I signed the VFW. When did I sign that? When mm -hmm. did I join the VFW? Not that many years ago, within the last ten. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. But I was very collegiate all my life. Well, that's great. Of course, I don't suppose the Moose is a service organization. Well, sure. Sure, it's an organization, a very, very influential. <laughs> it, well, it does a lot of, it does a lot of things at Christmas time and a lot in Moose we Heart. To, uh, we used to do. Uh, I, I don't belong. Well, I say I don't belong. I don't. I just don't go to. Doesn't go mm -hmm. Well, all the friends and those that I went, they're all gone. No. It wasn't I, the, I would go in there with Bill Jones, mm -hmm. uh, Les Sherman, Orson Abel. Oh. Sure. Stormy and all the things. Now you had another hobby. I I noticed down here on the floor there's a light here. Did you see this, Nick? Here's a got a big S on. I don't know whether that stands for softball <laughs> or or just what that S stands no, for. It doesn't stand for softball. It doesn't, huh? <laughs> it don't stand for Stewart either. <laughs> it don't stand for Stewart uh, either, huh? <laughs> that guy started with her for him. That's right. Ernie Storm and got you started Ernie with Marvin this. took us to our first ball game in a snowstorm. We Nineteen. Yeah. Yeah. You had a ticket every, every year after that. Oh, yeah. That. We had. You we, both went, right? You, you always yeah. went with them well, too. Meant a lot of times she did. Uh -huh. A bunch of us used to go. Well, Tell us a little bit about that. Reserve uh, seats, we went together all yeah. the time. Yeah, yeah. The first I went, uh, probably the first five years we bought tickets, but sure. they weren't reserved. Yeah. We would just go because your mother even went with us. Oh yeah, we used to go with her now and then. Yeah. We take Lloyd. We take Lloyd and Emma. We'd get four seats, and then we didn't have. We sat on the 35 yard line, about 30 rows, 30. 30 rows up on 25. 20, very, very little bit of that. Mm -hmm. At first, anyway. Huh? Oh, I never did much line work. Uh -huh. Because I read, all, I read most of the meters, okay. read all the farmland meters. And water was every what we were like every three months we read water beer. Okay. And because uh, Leighton Power at that time was in charge of the water department too. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. And the street department. And the street, the yeah. whole nine yards. Yeah. So it was a little different than it is today. Oh yeah, you bet. Uh, Much better situation we got today. It was all in a big of a city. You see, Barry Olson was the first city manager, mm -hmm. and he came here in nineteen. Sixty. Oh, wait, no, wait, okay. let's see. Yeah. Bill got killed in 
tell me a little bit about that. You, uh, I mean, you brought that up. Uh, that was while you were working for uh, Light and Power. Yeah. And Lou, uh, what was his name? Lou what? Lou Hoover. Hoover. Yeah. Okay. He lived up on East Main Street. He lived the first house east of the bowling alley. Or the, the bowling alley there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Where the, uh, yeah. Now, um, um, were you there that day that he? Can you tell me about that? How that accident happened? We just strictly, we don't. Chuck Lawyer was with us. Was lawyer and I and and, and Leo and we were chased as a transformer in that yard. What was that people's name on it? Was it drive by? I could usually I think of it. Parnell, yeah, it was up by Parnell. North side of the road. Yeah, thinking like for years I never I could wake up the night and think of their name. Yeah. They were nice people, and he, we were in the front yard, and he would get ready to change a transformer, and in the front, I don't remember off and on so many years ago, but he hit, he had to, he, he hit something and got a direct contact with it that was 7,200 volts. Wow. And he was just like that with all the way. Oh. There tonight. My goodness. Just that quick. Yeah. We, we, we were talking, and I were getting ready. I don't think we were getting ready to pull the transformer up. He was getting ready to, he, we had a, 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 a cast or a, an iron deal that we pulled up that, that set up on the cross, on the cross arms, and then we had a block of tackle set so, on and then we pulled up and made the guy up there, he did hang the transformer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Leo was just a super man, I'll mm -hmm. say. How did, you, how did you get him down, or how did that? You know, I don't really don't remember. remember. I huh? don't remember. Uh -huh. I don't remember. We, I'm sure we must have called right back to the office, because I don't just think yeah. who was, who Tom was the, yeah, Tom was the superintendent. Too. That's back when you try, climbed the poles with your, with, with oh, cleats. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, that's, spikes that's on a the great side. deal. And, yeah. and they've got some new, it looks to me like, They've got another new one or a new truck. Yeah, with with a, a, with another lift on. It's great. Yeah. Boy, I'll tell you, so well, we climb every pole. We used to climb them 60 footers along the, along the river every now and then to okay. check the, the uh, cross arms out, make sure it was all tight. Mm -hmm. so if they like bolts, made replace it or whatever. Oh, yeah. that was a lot of work, boy. And that was back when Light and Power went way out to the farmers, too. Before oh, yeah. It was Sold off to consumers. See, so they went to, uh, I can't remember, I could tell you. It mm -hmm. almost seems like they used to say, I read the farm, I read the farm roots for quite a few years. Every month I read them. Uh -huh. I, read, I read this side of town, water and in, in, in light, read the light every month. And I read all the farmlands. I think there was 80 miles of farmland. Yeah. I think it, it started right north of, of the power plant, what I don't know. Yeah. Keene Township went through Cansburg, uh, with the tail end of it. Uh, Murray Lake, Gavin Lake, Crooked Lake. Oh, yeah. All those areas. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now, he was kind of doing that. Uh, he used to come into the. Yeah, to the soda fountain. Is that how you got acquainted with him then? Uh, yes, it was. Because uh, that was 1946 when he came back. Yeah, so he's, he's now been tell been me been about this, Marie. How yeah. you? Uh, how yeah, you? Uh, that was uh, his folks always had the Life magazine saved because that had that was one of the top magazines yeah. at that time, and uh, they had a lot of them had them saved because you just never could get enough of them. Mm -hmm. And his folks would come. Then when he came home, he came in after and asked it for it with Stewart's name on. Okay. That was the first I'd ever seen him. I didn't know him before he went in the service. Okay, yeah, all right. Um, so uh, then uh, he came in more often, did he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You put an email. Yeah, he'd come in more often. And, yeah. and like I said, we used to walk up the Kaiser's kitchen. Oh, okay, then he'd ask you to out, walk up the Kaiser's. Uh -huh. And then we walk all the way home. Okay. He lives here, and I lived up on Dave, the corner. Dave Clark. Oh, Bill, Chris, and Madeline, or Dave Bill Clark, Madeline, always used yeah. to always ride bicycles out to Dallas for a car. Madeline would fall off the bicycle. 
<laughs> Guaranteed, she blows the whistle. But that was it. I mean, you that entertained was, yourself. Nobody yeah, did that was party. your. I mean, yeah, that it was, was your entertainment. And the nowadays, it's all getting together. And yeah, the simple things you did to, yeah. to get to know, know each other. TV was out when we got married in '48, but we didn't get one until yeah. 1950. So 1948, you got married. Did he ask you? Well, I don't really know. You know, it was leap year that year. I might have been oh. desperate. I don't oh. know. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we had planned it for spring. Then his dad died. Oh, so see. then we held off to September. Oh, you, yeah. did, did you did he have an engagement? Or didn't you have an engagement? Oh, no, well, no, we didn't. Not really, huh? Not anything big deal and everything like that. Uh, we just had a good time. We had a lot of fun. Sure. Lot yeah, of that, little, that little old Plymouth, 1932, and that's all we had to drive. Okay, that was his dad's. That was your dad's yeah. the car. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so you go in this coupe? Yeah, that's seeing that his dad had died before we got married, so mm -hmm. he just more or less. And was he was there for it, Frank so. Gould. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pete was a sales. Pete was working there then. Uh -huh. Bill Collins was a was the uh, mechanic, one okay. and he paid three hundred and fifty dollars for it. Three hundred fifty dollars, nineteen thirty-two uh, Plymouth coupe, yeah. and what you're still driving today, real runs out in the shed there. In the garage. Yeah. I've seen you drive it many times, parades and so on, and uh, just to drive it. Now, okay, um, and uh, so you got planning to get married, and. Uh, and your dad died just before uh, you planned on September the 1st, I believe. Uh, my notes tell me that 1948. Yeah. And uh, who was your minister? Or how did you get married? Reverend Wound. Reverend, Reverend, Reverend Wound. He was a congregational church. Yeah. Was that right? Yeah. 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 All right. Nice man. Nice man. Now, Marie, tell me about your family that you raised then. You raised uh, a couple girls? Oh, yes. We lost one. We, we lost the first one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. But um, then we were, let's see, 48. Amy was born in 1960, mm -hmm. and Sue in 62. In 58, we lost the first. It would have been a girl, too. Oh, yeah. And uh, we were in a happier and I'll get out, thinking that, oh, today's the day, you know. Yeah. But. Um, well, you got two nice girls here. And tell me about your grandkids. And Amy. Married and had uh, Ashley, mm -hmm. and uh, that one didn't work out. Okay, so and so they were they lived here back mm -hmm. home, mm -hmm. Amy and Ashley. So Ashley we had Ashley until she was almost ten. All right, and then Amy got married to Jeff Schramm, and then they have two little girls now. Well, isn't six that Six and nice. seven. <laughs> so you got yeah. more grandkids. <laughs> yeah, and then Ashley will be twenty-one. Okay. And then the Sue, of course, has two. In her, what are her? First boy. We have one grandson. Okay. Four what's, granddaughters. What's Sue's kids' names? Uh, his, her name, the kids' names are Carson and Jada. Okay. Jada was here and this morning. They're the oldest yeah, and the youngest there. of those last four. All right. And when they have their birthday, like now, they're five, six, seven, and eight. Uh -huh. And then there's a boy, too? Yeah, he's the oldest. Uh-huh. And his Carson. name is? He's a Carson. Carson. Okay. With a K. <laughs> well, by golly, that going in to get that Life magazine is worth it after all. Ah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> couldn't, okay. have done, couldn't have done better. <laughs> all right. Bob, uh, anytime, uh, Mary, that you think of something here about things that are happening in town, just jump in, okay? <laughs> now, Bob, you, uh, you were working uh, there with... Uh, Frank McMahon, and then uh, Mr. Olson came along, city manager, right? Well, in between there was Tom Moore. Or Tom Moore, okay. He, he was not a city manager. He was a, yeah. uh, he was the the uh, Light and Power Light and superintendent, power. right? Okay. Superintendent, yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice man. He lived right in the corner. Uh, well, where Regan's lived now. Dr. Oh, yeah. And you got a promotion, didn't you, about that time, or a different job situation, or were well, you still working? Well, yeah, that's where it was in Strictly Water. Strictly Water. Yeah. That's the water department. Yeah, that's where he helped me get my, my 
licenses and so forth. You had to go to Lansing? Yeah, you? I had to go down to and I met some people down there uh -huh. who were, one of them came always around because they always, the small towns where they don't have licensed operators, mm -hmm. they, they come around a little more. Mm -hmm. So, but I, I was very fortunate. Okay. It was because I had uh, Tom, or if I had Tom and I, we, we went to Ann I had to go to Ann Arbor for oh, just a couple of three days one time when I first got first got into the deal. For some reason, because there was some something going on here that they wanted me to be a part of the scene or, or whatever. I don't remember many years ago. Yeah. And then, but Tom was just a super man, nice man, honest. Busted his butts for the guys, and, and they put the screws to him and got rid of him mm. because he had to spend money. Everything had run down, so I was, yeah. the whole town, utilities, everything that hey, you know, they had to get it back, maintenance back up so. with money, and, and they didn't have the money, you know, and he had he could see it because. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, they, they made a good mm -hmm. one up for him, and they got rid of him. Then he went to Marquette Nation. Where did where did he go to Indiana? Rensselaer. Rensselaer, Indiana. Okay. We we drove down there to visit him. Oh yeah. Nice, nice family. Okay. Yeah. Then anyway, then uh, so um, now you uh, you worked under a whole bunch of city managers then. Oh well. There's Bernie Olson. Bernie Olson was the first That's city fine. manager. Okay. Then Blair Bacon maybe. And then Bacon, another good guy. Yeah. We got a card for him. He lives in Calvary, in Florida. Uh -huh. Every year, I, uh, he was he was he was here during the sewer separation program. Okay. In '73. That was a big project. You better believe it. it. I'll tell you, he's done a good job. Separated the sewer from the from the yeah. from the, yeah. from the uh, Dorman Sanitary. They yeah. separated them and put a lot of water stuff in. And then after after uh, Todd Moore. Or after playing Baker with Ray Quayda. Gabe uh -huh. Ray. Yeah. And he was the top of them all. You really got along good with Ray then. Oh, yeah. Ray was just well, you got along with everybody. Well, yeah. I tried. Yeah. yeah. It isn't too hard to, if they're decent, you, you know, yeah. and play yeah. fair. That's a, that's a fairness. is a lot of light. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, you can't, but I, I got along good with all of them. Yeah. Ray was, well, they're all like you. Bernie Olson probably was the hardest to, to work for mm -hmm. because he had a drinking problem. Oh, okay. And he had a big drink. Right. He lost his leg and he lost his leg in the service. I see. You didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. No. But uh, he, his family, good, good, the two of them are state police officers. Mm -hmm. uh, After Ray Quayta came, uh, then they hired Pasquale. Yeah, right. Right well, now, yeah. Well, Did Ray you work on your past well for a no, while? No. no. I retired in, in the last day of the year in 1986. And Ray retired two months later. He was done. Oh. And then past well. Oh, so you then, just missed him. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how long it was before they got. But he seems to be a. Yeah. Doing a good job. Yeah. Now you, uh, that means you retired, you had put in uh, 40 some years. 45. 45 years with the city, total yeah. service. Yeah. That's a lot of, that's a lot of, a lot of service to our community. Bob. And it wasn't all, you know, you're, you're well, you're liked by about probably 50%, I guess. People are always, you know, the thing of it is, it's, it's, it's always cut up peed me off is <laughs> people blame the individual when the city makes rules and regulations and changes. <laughs> yeah. It's the guy that delivers the message that the messenger instead yeah, of right, <laughs> right. And I well I got along a lot well, I think you uh, you too. mended a lot of fences, Bob, and I think you you I can remember working with you many times. So I, I always I mean I You were fair. I fair I was people knew fair. you were fair. You gotta be fair. Yep. If you're not fair, well, that's, 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 you got, 
Now you've done a lot of ser- you've done a lot of service work too, and I know it's oh, one yeah. of the things you did. Showboat was going along pretty good oh, yeah. uh, during those times, and you were always involved with volunteering at Showboat. Oh yeah. And uh, tell me a little bit about what your main job was, the main thing you did uh, with Showboat. I just run, I run the spotlights. Okay, now those were spotlights that were up, one on each end of the of the bleachers area, way well, up to the top. They, they were up at the top right in the center, and there was a little platform deal that we made. Well, I didn't make it. Yeah. So it was like Frank and the guys made it mm-hmm. before I ever was, had anything to do with the Showboat. Uh, but we had a... We, we made it, it used to be each crawl, we had a, we had a, oh God, how big a lot was that? 40 foot extension, I think. Mm-hmm. He'd crawl up that extension. Well, I said, this kid ain't going up that extension. <laughs> so we made a deal, we could go up the front. Mm-hmm. We made it just out of two by fours and a little small, we had a, we had a trap door gate, we could get a we let it oh, back from out. the top of the yeah, bleachers. Yeah, on top, uh-huh. there, that was okay. Yeah, yeah we had a lot of, I love photos. No, that was uh, okay. So you had to tell me what was your duty on on those? Uh, did you were you the head uh, a spotlight person and well, another yeah. guy on the other side? Well, or? we had radio hookups. See, with, okay. uh, with whoever was there used to be a guy running that came from Chicago over here. I thought remembered his name for years. You probably don't remember. Not show, but Joe Golden. No, no. What was that fellow's name? He, he wasn't. He, he knew what he was doing. He didn't know the of the people that ran well, the deal. Put in the um, wires over to the. That well, was, no, that was Jared Moore. Jared Moore. Oh, okay. Myers and Moore uh-huh. had a shop in Grand Rapids. Okay. Sold trains. And they sold electric trains wow. and, oh. and things of that matter, okay. radios. And Anyway, you had so you had radios then to talk to. Oh yeah, we had two, we had radios. And uh, did you have to meet some of the stars? Met most of them. Mm-hmm. That sure was my favorite. She was. Why was she your favorite? Oh, she was just a nice person. Yeah. She just is like we are. Yeah. You know, she was no big, and here she was a one of the most popular yeah. people in in Hollywood, I guess. Isn't that what I told you too, Nick? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, she was my just, favorite. Just too. a great yeah. person, and I got nice. along real good with who was the one that Milton Burrow? Milton Burrow. Yeah. You, you tell me that story, Marie. You got a little story to tell about Milton Burrow, don't you? Well, you and the girls. With, with the girls. Yeah. yeah. We didn't. Oh yeah. We didn't know whether he would see us or not, but the girls were just little, uh-huh. and uh, they wanted to buy a pillow. They had low pillows up. Oh, okay. They wanted to know, could they take him one? Take, take so Milton we didn't Burrow. know. We went over to his trailer. Not, and we were surprised. Boy, he invited us in, and he was happy to see the kids, and he thanked them for the pillow. And so it really was worth wasn't that, it. Wasn't that nice? They always okay. remembered that. All right. Governor, who was it? Was it you that said he... Well, we, I had, uh, he oh. was, I had a bad day the day yeah. that, I, yeah. that, okay. I, that I saw him uh, when I had to find out about his ushering he was having a bad day oh, yeah. and then, but that, that everybody has a bad day yeah. now and then so the that one was the way I that heard goes. most flack about was when <laughs> the, the young colored singer the girl mm. mm-hmm. when she came uh, Leslie Uggams yeah uh-huh. I really honestly never heard anything good about her Oh yeah, yeah. And I used to yeah. watch her on TV before yeah. she came, and yeah. I just thought. Well, she we was had to wait the show, you know, for because she wouldn't go on the show because she didn't have a carpet for her dancers, yeah. and so the end men had to do their act. Everybody else had to do that. It wasn't until 9:30 before she come out, Isn't because we flew that we flew a um, we flew a um, carpet in from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And it got into Grand Rapids Airport in the afternoon before we knew it that, really? that she wouldn't go on. She said she wouldn't go on until the carpet was here. If you don't get it, I'm not going on that cement floor for my dancers. And she wouldn't. We had to get it from Grand Rapids, bring it out here as soon as the plane flew in with it, chartered the plane to bring it, got it on the Isn't rolled it out on there, and it was like 9.30 before she was going And on. she wouldn't do her act with no, the end men there it. either. Was no, they had went. to get off the stage. Yeah. I just thought I, yeah, it I was, never uh, heard a good but thing that's about the, it. That was the trend, what happened about that time, 
and that was one of the demises of Showboat, I think. The, the stars just got too greedy. Too they greedy. got too, too, big, too big for their pants. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, exactly. now that's why I'm so happy the way Showboat is back, doing what it's supposed to do, something for the community, and it's doing it uh, down there where you bring your lawn chair in, you sit down, you have a nice evening of entertainment, and, and you go away. Now that's what, to it's me, that's good. what Showboat okay. was for, us to pick All ourselves right. up, the community up by its bootstraps yeah. during the depression. I got and, uh, um, Look at the crowds they have at those. those yeah, we have nice crowds. Musicals. We have uh, from 800 yeah. to 1,500 yeah. people. Really? So, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. that's great. You'll have to come down next next I summer. Never, you know, I, I, I like them when they have their music if I can uh, yep. if they play. Now, back to Bob here, Bob and Marie. One other thing you told me, an interesting little thing about when you worked at the Christian Drugstore, you couldn't... Uh, uh, you couldn't uh, uh, get on the, um, uh, couldn't hear the show. You couldn't go to the show, could you? No. No. But we had a friend that fixed that up. Okay. He, what happened? Jared Moore at the time, though, he did the, all uh, the electrical stuff for the show. Mm -hmm. He hooked up all the sound okay. systems and stuff. <laughs> So all of a sudden, over he comes, swimming across the river there. Swimming across the river? Yeah, from the showboat tarp to the back door. That, to the back door of the, yeah, up the back drug store. Yeah, the Okay. And yell at us to get a ladder or something for him. And he came and hooked up our radio that was by the end of the fountain. And we could hear the whole show. <laughs> He bring a, he'd make a wire across? For free, yeah. Or what, it was, it was, I don't it wasn't know wireless. how he did it, but he came yeah. across. At that time, it was wasn't that? wireless. They didn't have wireless. Yeah, no. It had to be a wire. He's he, pulled I think across. He, the, yeah. Then the boat came right around there, though. So I think he had to yeah. end up getting kind of attached to the building. Uh-huh. Finally. Because the boat swung around there every yeah. night. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we hung out the back doors all the time. And, I know Mr. Avery and Chris, they were still decorating it, yet as it was going by. Oh, it used to be it was so quite a production. Oh, there was, there was another good fun. guy, I yeah. would, Ray yes. Avery. Yes. Yeah. He had a brewery store. He was a school teacher. He taught me oh, algebra. Yeah. Then yeah, he, when he retired, he had the, the, uh, oh, yeah. the jewelry store yeah. right next to the, the drug Christian shop. Drug yeah. Store. They lived right down in the corner there. Uh -huh. They built the house yeah. of Jim Wasowski. Oh, okay, Jim Osowski's house here on the corner. Yeah, right. They're High and uh, King too. Street. Hmm? Yeah. Of, uh, he was a, a nice, remember which squad? They were a good pair. They were nice, nice people. All yeah. right, now, so you retired. What did you do for hobbies, Bob, when you retired here? <coughs> yeah, what, take well, care of your car? Or? Yeah, you are. I'm not a car person. I, all I, the I, I'm a car person to the fact that I like to keep them in good shape. Yeah. Well, they look I'm nice. Mechanically inclined to do nothing. They look nice. Walking. They always look nice. But I, uh, I have the yard. And Your yard always showed it too. I come across the pictures the other day mm -hmm. of you and the boys when you put the addition on the garage, sir. Oh, we did yeah. work on your garage. Right after that was the year I retired. Yeah. Okay. Nineteen. Uh, around 1985. Yeah. Because uh, you you done it in the fall, you got it all done, clean. The, you put the new roof, added the roof onto the garage, and you spent boy, have I ever better than that. Okay. Oh, right. Lordy. All right. Yeah. Now, were you, uh, Bob? Were you ever uh, a member of uh, any of the uh, civil organizations or civic organizations or any of the service organizations? Nope. Like the Lions or the oh, service no. ones. You are. You were. Well, the DFW? The Legion. Well, that North American Legion, American DFW, Legion? DFW, yeah, yeah DFW. sure. Yeah. I brought to Roman Maloney and I were two of the first ones to join the American Legion after the war. Oh, okay. As a matter of fact, Ruby signed me up. Okay. And uh, then I signed the DFW. When did I sign that? When mm -hmm. did I join the DFW? Didn't... Not that many years ago. We didn't last that. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I was American Legion. Well, that's great. Of course, I don't suppose the moose is a service organization. Well, sure, sure, it's an organization. It's very, very influential. <laughs> it, well, it does a lot of it does a lot of things at Christmas time and a lot in moose we heart. To, uh, we used to do. Uh, I, I don't go on. Well, I say I don't go on. I don't. I just don't go down. It doesn't move anywhere. Mm -hmm. Well, all the friends and those that I went, they're all gone. No. It wasn't like the I would go in there with Bill Jones. Mm -hmm. Les Sherman, Orson 
Jason Abel. Uh, sure. Stormy and all like that. Now you had another hobby. I I noticed down here on the floor there's a light here. Did you see this, Nick? Here's a got a big S on. I don't know whether that stands for softball <laughs> or or just what that S stands uh, for. It doesn't, huh? <laughs> and don't stand for Stewart either. <laughs> don't stand for Stewart uh, either, huh? <laughs> that guy started with Ernie Foreman. That's for Ernie Storm and got you started Ernie with Foreman this. Ernie Foreman took us to our first ball game in a snowstorm. We uh, right on the west side, we had ideal seats. Great seats. Great seats. Some of the people that you met there uh, that was sitting by you and got to be friends with. Oh, right? yeah. The, well, there was a, a, uh, a colored family that sat in front of us. They came, and when they came there, they, the, they had a little baby. Uh-huh. Well, the last month of last year we were there, that little baby graduated from college. Okay. <laughs> and they had two or three more. Nice car factor. And well, oh, well, yeah, that, that's Mr. it. Mr. Director. Boy, he, he is, I'll tell you. There's no reason. In my, in my, I'm, I'm not very well versed in it, but I'll tell you right now. I can understand why they're having problems at Michigan State with coaches and so forth with this guy. He was the athletic director. Uh, well, he was. Yeah, he became athletic. He was. He, he was, was just a hockey coach. He was, and he had an assistant with him and their wives. Mm -hmm. Nice ladies, both of them. Sister coach, young guy. Just as <laughs> polite, nice. But he had just a heart. There's going to be problems. Yeah. He's that type of a person. And this comes from a diehard fan. Well, that's right. <laughs> yes, I, I spent a lot of a lot of time down there. I had to take what I took my exams down there. That, yeah. was, just, that was just a matter of sure. Now, uh, may you tell me a little bit about the sisters that lived over here on Lafayette Street, the Mueller sisters? The Mueller sisters. Mm -hmm. They were they were just a nice bunch of older ladies. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was the brother and the one Kate uh -huh. so lived in that house together over here on the okay. row. Right. And, uh, but then there were three other sisters, as their husbands died, they came back home. All right. Well, then gradually, they were old. Yeah. Older. Okay. And, uh, then it got down, at first it was the three, five. Yeah. And then it went down to four sisters. Then it was three for a long time. Okay. And the brother died, so just the three women lived over there. And they were, they were... Uh, Oh, a nice you, bunch of older nice ladies. ladies. They went very, down, very down, 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 to the, down to the soda fountain. Oh, okay. All decked out in their furs and their fur hats. And, and they oh, lay there. Yeah. And as they sit down, Kate was the taller one. Huh. She was a big gal. Huh. And uh, what was it? Get me a tray, babe. Did she say babe? Did she say something <laughs> else? She wanted an ashtray. They smoked. Oh, I see. Oh, she wanted okay. an ashtray. Huh? And we didn't leave them on the uh, tables, uh -huh. but if anybody wanted one, they could have them, because we had too many school kids there. <laughs> and, but, I don't know, they just they just enjoyed themselves, and, and then finally Chris helped them out so much when oh. they got a little problem. Oh, yeah. If they wanted to sell something, he would buy it from them, oh. just, just to help them out. Then when Chris died, Ruby sort of took over. Oh, okay. And uh, then... I myself used to go in the girls used to go over there to see them and talk. Oh, yeah. And that got at That's the end small of, town. That's just what yeah, small that, town does. Really That's why does. I wanted that story uh, a little bit out. And uh, here's one of them you told me about. You gave me a thing for a uh, purse to put in the museum that her husband oh, had yeah. been uh, working And for. I was so sorry that somehow we lost mm -hmm. the, the scar. Oh, uh huh. That, that was McKinley, that? wasn't it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Coolidge, I believe. He worked for uh, as an ambassador under uh, yeah, McKinley. Then, then the she got invited when he got to be president. She got invited to the uh, no, inauguration. The big deal, yeah, them dancing, and, and then she had this scarf and then that purse, uh -huh. and and it just made me feel so bad that we did misplace yeah, that oh well. yeah. scarf. But okay. you had to, had to know them to appreciate them. Yeah, they, they were they were yeah. nice older ladies. And well intelligent, well mannered. Some of them are buried up here right by the cannon. 
Yeah. Right, oh, there right there. They're right in there. Right in there. And then North there's, of there. One, two, three of them out at the Catholic Cemetery. Oh, okay. Now, we're winding up down here now, and I think that, um, Bob, uh, you know, uh, uh, I don't know. Nick, is there anything that you'd like to ask Bob or, or Marie? Okay. Uh, is there anything you'd like to add that you know of offhand that you'd like to add to your thing? No. Oh. I was simply because I can't remember anymore. <laughs> I, 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 well, you run a lot. I tell you. Stuff out here. You went through a pretty thorough. We could go through. Yeah. Uh, we could go through probably two, three more hours. And uh, <laughs> but we got to call our quits somewhere. And uh, the one question I want to ask you, Bob, right. and I don't know. You haven't given us any thought, but maybe you have. One effect did the years that you were in the service have on the rest of your life? Did it have an effect on oh, you? Oh, yeah, yeah. What what, what effect? Did, what do you think you got out of the service, sir? Or didn't get out of it? Well, well yeah, others. but you've been a lot of friends, too. Uh, decent people, I, I, I did. Uh -huh. We did. We had a lot of very well-educated, a lot of more, and nice, just decent that you would be. You, you learn from other people. So it was just a good, a good, it was really, a good you don't have a bad taste in your mouth no, for having no, served no, your country. No. And we, you did it with, with, with grace. And, we had, and, we had good officers. Yeah. We had good non-coms. We had, they were all, we had a lot of fun. Oh, good. And uh, we enjoyed one another. Well, Bob, uh, I'll, I'll tell you, uh, Nick and I uh, want to personally thank you, uh, and Marie both, uh, uh, for your service to our country and for the service you give us in our community. And because uh, you both have served the city and the community and our country extremely well. well. And Lowell Area Historical Museum, we want to thank you especially for your service to your country because, uh, you know, it's because of men like you uh, that serve that we can all uh, have our businesses, own our businesses, and we can all raise our families under a blanket True. of freedom. True. That's right, really. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. The following oral military history project is a series of documentaries in association with the Lowell area men and women who proudly served and sacrificed part of their lives to preserve the opportunities for all of us to build our businesses and raise our families under a blanket of freedom. For reservations and more information, contact the Lowell Area Historical Museum at 616-897-7688.